This program is brought to you by Cable Franchise Vs and generous donations from viewers like you. Welcome to the planning, Amherst Planning Board meeting of April 7th, 2021, based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, and signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020. This planning board meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. My name is Jack Jemsek, and as the chair of the Amherst Planning Board, I'm calling this meeting to order at mm, 6, you know, say 32 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and is available uh, via Amherst Media Livestream. Minutes are being taken. Board members, I will take a roll call when I call your name, unmute yourself, answer affirmatively, and then place yourselves back on mute. So Maria Chow. Here. Tom Long. Here. Andrew McDougall. Present. Doug Marshall. Present. Janet McGowan. Here. Johanna Newman. Here. And then myself. So um, we have a full attendance. So board members, if you have technical issues, please let Pam know uh, if there are technical difficulties and we may need to pause temporarily to correct the problem and then continue the meeting. The discussion may be suspended while the technical issues are addressed and the minutes will note if this occurred. Please use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I will see your raised hand and call on you to speak after speaking uh, remember to remute re yourself. Opportunity for public comment will be provided during the pub general public comment item and other appropriate times during the meeting. Please be aware the board will not respond to comments during the general public comment period. If you wish to make a comment during the public comment period, you must join the meeting via the Zoom teleconferencing link, which is shown. Um, the link is also shown on the meeting agenda, posted on the town website via the calendar listing this meeting, or you can go to the planning board webpage and click on the most recent agenda, which lists the Zoom link at the top of the page. Please indicate if you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise hand button when public comment is solicited. If you have joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your telephone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished. Um, residents can express their views up to three minutes at the discretion of the planning board chair. If a speaker does comply with these, uh, does not, if a speaker does not comply with these guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be uh, dis disconnected from the meeting. So with that said, we have our agenda. <laughs> And we have no minutes to review at this time. And we can open it up to the public comment period. And anybody, I see Meg Gage, Susanna Musprat. So um, with the public, you know, state your name and your address. And we can start with Meg. Hi, Meg. Can you? There you go. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate the public comment being in the beginning. Um, I'm Meg Gage. I live at 208 Montague Road in North Amherst. And I want to speak about our library and our hope that the parking plan that you develop is going to be aligned with the uh, beautiful building and the historic district. Um, there are all sorts of ways of having parking. It doesn't have to be paving over. We, there are live parking, or like parking with blocks that allow the grass to grow through. Um, I'm sure you've all seen the amazing garden in the front of the library. It's all done by volunteers. The volunteers also manage the garden in the median uh, at the, in front of the library between um, Sunderland Road and uh, Montague Road. And we can really uh, manage gardening the back of the new the the new front of the library and making it very beautiful. It's a nationally recognized historic district, uh, and the library is one of the is the kind of along with the Black Walnut Inn and the church uh, centerpiece of our historic district. And we would really hope to be creative in parking and not just pave over a whole bunch of area. We appreciate wanting to 
facilitate more people coming to the library, particularly when the Jones is renovated. We're imagining that people will want to get their books at the North Amherst Library. We hope they will. And uh, we want them to be able to park their cars, but we don't need to pave paradise uh, in order to make that work. So I just hope we'll work together to do something that's beautiful and creative and that we're going to take into consideration the whole ambiance of the the center of North Amherst, which is, we're all working hard to uh, build, build up the beauty and the history. Okay. Uh, so Meg, I, I thought you were talking about the Jones Library, but the North Amherst Library is actually on the, the docket here. That's why I'm talking about it. It's not Okay. So library. you'll want to chime in um, as part of that project because the public comment period is... I know, the problem is I, my book group is at seven, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> when is your, somebody Fine. else tomorrow, somebody else may jump on then too. I'm sorry, I spoke at the no, wrong time. Not a problem, no, thank I'm you so much. Our, our beloved North Amherst Library, and we're so thrilled by the design Kuhn Riddle did, and thrilled by the anonymous donor who's made it all possible. It's just amazing that we're saving this beautiful historic building and making it functional. So, Very good. Thank also, you. I think I can't talk later, I probably, but maybe someone else will jump on. Sorry to be out of place. No, that's fine. I, I understand. Thank you. Uh, Susanna Muspratt, uh, say your name and your address. Hi, Susanna. Can you unmute yourself? There you go. Hello. Susanna Muspratt, 38 North Prospect Street. I think my comment is to that Chris Prestrup. Uh, I just wanted to say that I'm so looking forward to the website we've been promised where you're going to be posting updates on where things stand at the various zoning amendments. Uh, I talked to a lot of people in town who really aren't up to speed on what's happening and they're asking me questions and I'd rather have a place to send them that um, is Laying it out the way you want it laid out. So, um, and I think the Gazette and the Bulletin have not done a very good job of staying abreast of all the news in ours. There's so much of it. But um, I hope when it is ready, you can have a banner on the first page of the town website, the way you have the COVID banner now, so that people will easily be able to find it and go there. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna. And I believe that's it. So we can start into it. I, you know, we're at 640. Uh, and um, so we have the North Amherst Library uh, for 635. It's SPR 2021-06 uh, at 8 Montague Road. And it's continued from the March 17th, 2021 hearing. Um, and they request a site plan review uh, approval to add in addition to the existing building and add new parking, uh, walks, utilities, drainage, and landscaping. And it's in map 5A parcels 37 and 38 in the B-VC zoning district. So, um, and... With regard to the, the preamble, Chris, I need to go back to. You don't really okay. need to read the right. preamble for this. So we'll just start. Yeah. So we can we can just flip it over to the to the uh, the project team uh, and who would that be, Mike? We have um, Mike here and uh, Chris Farley and Chris Charles Farley. And Great. Sure. Um, I don't know if you get guys, uh, Charles or Chris, if you guys want to go. I mean, just a quick um, synopsis. I guess last time we presented and there were several comments. There were many comments having to do with parking um, and whether or not we have sufficient spaces. We have made a proposal to add spaces. Um, there were other comments. There were several comments about um uh, having to do with the safety of Montague Road and Sunderland Road, you know, uh, where pedestrians cross, is there enough lighting, et cetera, um, the speed, um, sight distance. 
and Gilbert uh, Guilford was here last time. I don't know if he's going to be signing on, but um, you know, basically, I think that um, this project, you know, does not address some of those concerns that were brought up. Obviously, um, I think it's well known that um, there's going to be future. There are plans for the future realignment of Sunderland Road, which would include um, um, potentially other improvements and some redesign on Montague Road going south to Pine Street and Meadow and that whole intersection. So I don't, you know, we don't know what that's going to look like. Um, but I think that um, Guilford was Guilford was confident that, you know, some issues would be addressed, you know, at that time, you know, so we certainly hope it's not far off into the future. I know that the town has is looking for funding to further the design of, um, of the road realignment. So, and, and we don't know what state, what state that's in, but, um, you know, it certainly is something that's planned for the near future. Um, and then further, there were a couple of comments about um, some of the building design and aesthetics and which um, Kuhn Riddle will obviously address. But I guess if you'd like me to start, I can, I can flip over to the, to the revised plans. And I think I basically want to talk about the, you know, what we have um, planned for the parking. Um, so let me see if I can. Thank you. Get over to that. Uh, okay. Let's see. Okay. This is the um, illustrative plan. And I guess I'll, oops, I will just use that. Um, so let's see, how do I start last time? Whoops. All right. So just to orient you, this is the existing library building. What is hatched in here is the proposed addition. And then further to the north, we have the uh, proposed parking. The original proposal just called for these 10 spaces facing the library. Um, and a, you know, a slightly um, relocated curb cut on Sunderland Road with the curb cut going out to Montague Road being closed. You, uh, this kind of heavier dashed line, the symbol indicates the, the new curbing. Um, so we are closing the curb cut that goes out onto Montague Road and the sidewalk and curb would be extended, you know, from um, across the opening, across the current opening, which is shown right there. Um, so basically our proposal is to add um, 12 more on-site spaces, which are shown here. And these are just painted spaces on the existing pavement of the former garage parcel. So th there's, a, there's like a little bit of a trade-off here. Before we had, we had uh, proposed to cut out some of this pavement and turn it into a grass swale. So in this scenario or this proposal, there would be no grass swale at this time, but certainly a rain, you know, we have in mind, um, uh, speaking with Guilford, that a rain garden uh, would be added in the future to take on some of that runoff from the north and funnel it to the drainage system on Sunderland, um, Sunderland Road. But this proposal is just to add a five to six foot blend of pavement from the edge of the north edge of the proposed parking, which is this dashed line, and then meet, meeting the um, existing pavement on the former garage parcel um, and painting these 12 spaces um, so that there's more convenient parking provided directly at the building. So that gives us 22 spaces on site. Um, and then we are proposing to stripe spaces that um, on Sunderland Road where the curb line kind of like flares in and there is space. If um, I can show you the aerial photograph that our rendering was put on. It does even show, you know, a car, a van parked along here. I think you can probably actually get in four spaces there, but we're showing three in the proposal to meet the 25 um, that we calculated was required by zoning. So, you know, that would be three on street spaces, but they're essentially there um, in existing condition. They, I think the striping is just basically has been, has worn away and haven't been painted um, or repainted. Um, so that's basically our proposal for adding more spaces. We did consider 
you know, overflow on, you know, around the former garage building. But if we had that swale, it would have made it a little bit more difficult for people to park here to, to kind of like cross, you know, over and get a more of a direct line to the entrance of uh, the new entrance to the library on the north. And so seeing that there is existing pavement there, I think Guilford um, kind of gave us the directive to look for this as a solution to provide those on-site spaces, which obviously in the future they, it could be improved or repaved um, and then potentially with that um, rain garden area to the north and potentially with a lot more green space to the north as well once that garage um, is demolished um, to make room for the road realignment. Um, the reason why we're not having the grass swale is because the town still wants to have access into the, um, into the garage portion of this building, which is shown right here. So, you know, there need to be some maneuvering room to be able to get um, trucks or whatever vehicles in and out of, the, uh, out of that building. So that's the reason why we've kind of taken that grass swale out. Um, it was an improvement. It was reducing the coverage and providing more green space. But um, I think we're basically, I guess if you want to think about it, sacrificing that, you know, for, um, to be able, you know, to, to be able to do it in the future. Um, and, as, and as I said, there was some other issues about lighting and stuff on Montague Road. Montague Road is controlled by the state. Um, so that's going to be a whole process of, of coming up with a design and having to go through DOT, mass DOT. Uh, for approval. And, and again, that that's anticipated to be part of the road realignment project, uh, the Sunderland Road realignment project, you know, coming into Montague Road. So hopefully some of these issues will be addressed. Um, we can look to address potentially um, access for pedestrians or, or, or easier and safer access across Sunderland Road to the former school parcel, which is right here. Um, again, that's not within the scope of this, of the library edition project at this time, um, but certainly it's something that, you know, the, um, the town DPW um, would keep in mind, um, you know, along with the, um, the road realignment project and, and potential future improvements and, and, you know, whether or not a piece of Sunderland Road is, is eliminated and turned into green space as well. Um, I think I'm going to let um, Charles and Chris talk about the architecture and show hey, you some uh, of the changes there. Sure. And um, then we'll, we'll be happy to answer any questions about the site and things after um, the architectural presentation. Uh, well, thank you, Mike. Um, uh, my name is Chris Farley from Kuhn Riddle Architects uh, in downtown Amherst. Uh, thank you very much for the, uh, to the board for uh, having us back for this continuation. We appreciate it. Um, I am going to share my screen uh, as well. Um, sorry, uh, bear with me for just one sec. Uh, and what I'm going to do is, is essentially the same thing that, that Mike Lou did, and that is really just focus on uh, the changes uh, to the drawings, uh, the modifications to the drawings that were submitted um, for this uh, hearing continuation, and to try to address some of the specific issues that were, that were brought up at, at, uh, at the hearing two weeks ago. Um, so one of the things I just wanted to clarify was the, the, the portion of the existing building that would be uh, demolished and removed as part of this project. So um, you can see here, this is, a, this is a photograph of the existing building. It was right after the trees were removed in the back. Um, and this red uh, rectangle with the X through it is the section of wall that would be removed uh, in order to make the physical connection between the addition connector in the existing building. So uh, what this shows is that the, the two sets of windows on either side would be preserved. Uh, we will be, we, we are proposing uh, removing a couple of the clear story windows, the, the smaller pane glass windows, uh, which is necessary to get the, the headroom that's required uh, for the lift and for the new stairway uh, to make the connection. But other than, other than that, um, 
the, the vast majority of the, of the rear of the building would remain intact. And then also just to clarify, um, the existing chimney here, which goes all the way down to the foundation in the basement uh, on the inside of the building, that would also be removed in order to make the physical connection between the connector uh, up into the existing uh, library level. Uh, so those are the two pieces of the existing building that, that we are proposing removing in order to, uh, to connect with the new addition. Um, and then um, uh, there's a, 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 a slightly revised set of um, new elevations. Um, and I'm gonna focus in first on the, uh, the new entry elevation excuse me, the north elevation. We have, uh, uh, we're proposing that there be a simple uh, sign on the side of the building that says North Amherst Public Library. Uh, they would be aluminum block letters, uh, dimensional letters that would be pinned off the building. Uh, so uh, that's really the only thing, the only additional signage uh, for this new addition. But we did feel that it was uh, the right approach to uh, to have to have a, a sign on the building identifying what it was. Uh, as we said before, the existing sign on the front of the building, uh, the existing entry side on the south, that that sign will remain. Uh, we are proposing a slightly altered uh, set of columns and and bases uh, for this uh, this new gable entry to the front. Uh, the columns have been simplified a bit from the previous Doric columns. Um, these, these would be straight-sided columns, which would be more consistent with the, uh, the columns that are on the front of the building. Uh, these are a little bit bigger, uh, and we feel that they're necessary to, uh, to provide um, the appropriate uh, visual uh, aesthetic support for the, uh, the space above. Uh, and then in order to address the concern about um, wear and tear on the, the, the painted wood bases, what we are proposing is that the two bases under the columns would be made out of brick. Um, and that would kind of tie uh, uh, this part, uh, this entry into the existing building because the, the base of the existing building is, is brick. Uh, so we felt that that would be a nice tie-in with the existing building, the existing materials, as well as providing something that would stand up much better uh, to the wear and tear uh, of, of, of this entry, especially in the winter with shoveling, et cetera. Um, there was previously some uh, curved arching trim above this, uh, this double window, which is a window into the meeting room. Um, and we've removed that and have provided just a simple uh, straight flat head trim for these windows. Um, and then uh, this is an elevation, uh, kind of a combination of an elevation and a section, a section cut through the, the new connector addition, but looking toward the, uh, toward the addition. And um, we just put a note here saying that the uh, the south facing uh, uh, roof face um, uh, could that the, the the trusses the structural trusses in the attic would be sized to allow the potential addition of uh, of photovoltaic panels in the future uh, as we discussed two weeks ago uh, the pv is 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 not a part of this initial project um, but there was some um, uh, suggestion that it might be nice to at least have the option for PV on site and it's a relatively easy thing to do to size the trusses and the structure in order to be able to support uh, those those panels in the future uh, if that decision is made and also the fact that we have a standing seam room uh, uh, I'm sorry a standing seam roof specified for the project uh, that makes the addition of the uh, the attachment of the PV panels to the roof quite simple uh, as well. So um, uh, there is that uh, that modification as well. Um, and then uh, there was uh, let's see. So this is the Sunder Sunderland Road elevation, the west elevation. 
Um, there was some confusion uh, among the design team as to exactly what the design of this uh, screening fence would be for the proposed new mechanical systems that would be installed on grade. And so what we're showing here is a horizontal wood uh, screening uh, fence. Uh, it would actually be a, a, a return to both sides. So it's a three-sided enclosure to, to help screen that mechanical equipment. Um, and also the, the, the details that Mike Liu is showing in his package reflect uh, this same design. Um, so there is that change. Um, uh, gosh, I'm not sure what happened to page three. Uh, well, I, I, um, <laughs> uh, for some reason it's not loading. Well, page three was, uh, it just showed an elevation of the existing library from the south where there are no proposed changes. Um, and then there was uh, an elevation of the north side of the library simply showing this same uh, area, uh, which would be removed for the connection to the new, uh, to the new building. Um, and then we have a, a few uh, a 3D renderings, uh, updated 3D renderings uh, showing um, the, the, the revised columns, the brick bases at the entry, uh, the proposed signage on the side of the building, uh, the removal of the trim here uh, above the windows going into the meeting room. Um, so this is that same west elevation. Uh, this, is, this is the current Sunderland Road here on the right. And this is just showing uh, the, uh, the wood fencing. Uh, we're currently showing it as uh, a painted fence, uh, which would match the trim and the base of the proposed uh, library. Um, and then we have uh, just a slightly different view uh, kind of from the northeast looking at that same uh, building addition. Um, and I do want to say one thing about the, the, the color, the, uh, the color of the, the proposed siding here. Um, there was a fair amount of discussion about that uh, with the planning board uh, two weeks ago, as well as some of the other boards uh, that we've, that we've uh, come before as part of this process. And um, what we, one of the developments that's occurred is that uh, we are most likely looking at um, uh, possibly repainting the existing library. Uh, there was some concern that the existing library uh, really did need to have a, a, a fresh coat of paint applied to it. And so I, it looks as though we are gonna be exploring uh, repainting that as part of this project. Um, I know that in the, I believe it was the mid nineties when, when uh, the, uh, the, the library was, was painted, um, there was some research done about what the original colors might've been. And I think um, we would uh, like to go back and revisit that a bit. Um, and, and so relative to repainting the library, our feeling is, is, uh, is that until we, we do that research, we really aren't going to know exactly what the final proposal is for the color uh, of the library, not only uh, uh, the, the siding, whether that remains natural or whether it perhaps becomes a painted uh, uh, finish, as well as the trim uh, color, uh, uh, trim finish uh, paint color. So um, what we'd like to propose is that uh, as part of um, uh, as part of the next phase of work, uh, we would look into the historic uh, colors of the existing library to confirm um, what those would in fact be uh, if we did, uh, did that repainting. And then quite honestly, during the uh, construction phase, what we would like to see is a, is a, a section of the building mocked up uh, in situ uh, after, after it's constructed, but before it's, it's finished, where we would uh, finalize that, 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 uh, those color selections for the addition. So um, we are showing as part, of, uh, as part of this presentation, we're still showing painted uh, trim and a natural cedar uh, shingle for the siding. But we also acknowledge that there are a couple of additional steps that need to occur before those colors would be finalized. 
Um, and we understand that if we, if there was a change uh, to the color that we're presenting uh, tonight, that we would most likely be obligated to come back before the planning board and, and present those final colors, which would, we would be perfectly willing to do. Um, and then uh, uh, I know Chris Brestrup may uh, address this, but as, um, I just wanted to let you know as well that we have, uh, uh, at the end of last week, we did submit a product, uh, project notif notification form, a PNF, uh, to the Mass Historic uh, Commission, MHC, uh, about this project and about the proposed demolition. Uh, so we have filed that application or that, that form with, uh, with the MHC. Uh, we have not yet heard back, uh, but uh, that, that, that notification is, is, is underway. Uh, and I think that's, that's about it. Um, Charles, do you have anything that you'd like to add? No, Chris, thanks. That was a, that was a great job. Um, uh, other than to, I want to thank everybody for being here and, and, uh, we're, we're excited about this project and, and, it, and, it, and it really, is, at, at this point, in terms of the colors and materials, it, it, it is somewhat fluid, as Chris said, and and it'll, it'll be it'll be sort of resolved and finalized as we go through the, uh, the the process of understanding what the historic paint you know colors were for the existing library, and uh, and I, I could imagine a scenario where we actually get material samples and we we bring things out on site and build the mock-up, as Chris was saying, and you know, weather permitting and all other conditions being favorable, it'd be great to have, you know, folks out there and, and see things live and in person. So um, look forward to that. And uh, also just welcome your, your comments after uh, Chris's presentation this evening. Thanks. Thank you, Mike, Chris and Charles. Uh, Chris, you. Chris, me? Chris? Yeah, Chris Presser, please. Um, so I would I'd just like to ask a question about the roof of the connector. I know that Doug Marshall brought that up last time and said it was um, kind of a flat roof and it was, um, you know, in between two roofs that were more, you know, historical. So it looks like you've done mm -hmm. something to the roof of the connector. Can you describe that? Uh, well, to be honest, we, we haven't changed that uh, from the previous uh, from the previous presentation, we are still proposing a, a flat roof. Um, there is a, a also a skylight uh, here in the middle, which was something I, uh, that was part of the previous presentation. Um, but qu quite honestly, we really haven't changed uh, that connector. Um, I, I think our feeling is, uh, Chris and, and Doug, that um, the the roof forms of the of the of the existing building and the addition are are really very strong roof forms. The connector is intended to be a piece of the of the addition, which really uh, provides a connection between uh, the the new meeting room and the bathrooms and the new entry up into the existing library and. Our feeling is, is that trying to minimize the volume and the, the form of that connector will really help keep the focus uh, and the attention on the existing building and the addition. So um, I, I think we, we, feel, we feel that the flat roof, um, there, uh, uh, the flat roof is the, is the appropriate uh, form for the connector. Uh, we do understand that there are some issues about snow load, uh, drainage, uh, and those will certainly be addressed in the in the coming phases of design. Um, but Chris, it might be it might Chris might be helpful to go back to that um, demo photograph you had um, that shows the back of the. Yeah. So I, I, to Chris's point, I mean, you know that that red outline there demarcates the uh, the, the scope of that flat roof connector, and by by, by putting that by having that piece be a flat roof it tucks in underneath the existing eaves and it doesn't obscure uh the 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 ornament or, or the detail of that dorm where it's projecting forward with the sunburst on there and so it, it really is a way of of a sort of minimizing that connection letting the detail and ornament of the existing library sort of breathe and give it space and then um 
uh, let the separate edition, let the new edition stand free. And I think that the 3D images do a good job of describing the way the flat roof piece in three dimensions from the approach really does um, kind of disappear behind the behind the addition. So uh, to this point, this figure is very interesting. It, it, to me, it looks like this library was built and designed uh, with the intention of a, an addition because of that spot there is, you know, clearly, uh, you know, clear of of you know the windows and and, and the dormer. You know, it's it's central to it. And is was that part of the plan? Does anybody know? I I would I would guess I, I I think that I think it's just fortuitous quite honestly that 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 um, there is this spot that's really pretty much just the right size to make the connection we need to for the wheelchair lift and the two stairways mm. um, I I think the fact that the that the chimney uh, um, and the fireplace which you can't see here because it it's only expressed on the inside. I think the fact that that comes right down the middle of the building would preclude uh, an easy connection without the removal of that chimney. So I would have to guess and suppose that that the design didn't necessarily um, uh, consider a future addition, but but I do think that it's a fortuitous spot that that we've tried to take advantage of. Okay. Uh, Chris, you have. Uh, no, uh, that satisfies me. I just didn't notice that little cupola previously, the um, skylight cupola. So I just wanted to find out about that. Thank you. Okay, sure. Great. Uh, so we'll go on to board member comments. I have Johanna and Doug and Maria. Johanna, please. I can't hear you, Hannah. Yeah, she disappeared. Oh gosh, thank you, sorry. Oh there, um, okay. Great, I've been talking. First of all, thank you so much for the thoughtful, um, you know, continuation of your presentation. Um, and I have two core questions. So the first, I was wondering if you could go back to the initial um, drawing of the site plan and I wondered, I just remember previous commenters talking about how much pedestrian and cycling access to it there is to this. And it seems to me like removing the curb cut to Sunderland, no, to Montague Road is one change there. And I'm just trying to figure out if you could show us where a cyclist would, like if a cyclist were coming from Pine Street, how would they get to the bike parking and the entrance of the library? That's one question. And then my second question, um, I'm really pleased to see the roof be, you know, made solar ready. And I just wanted to ask whether the electrical systems are also going to be, quote, solar ready. Um, well, I, I, I would can certainly address the, uh, the PV. I, I think our intention is, yes, that um, that the the electrical infrastructure as well as the structural uh, roof support would be uh, a photovoltaic panel ready. So the, the intention is to provide a, 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 a building and, a, a, and an infrastructure that would uh, easily accept the addition of, of PV panels. Um, and, and I think when it comes to, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to answer the, the, the question about uh, the bicycle. Uh, and then maybe Mike, if you have anything to add, uh, you could chime in. Sure. So, um, uh, you know, Pine Street and, and, and Meadow Street are, are kind of off the map down here. I, I think it depends a little bit on, on, on uh, which direction you were coming from. If you were coming from Pine Street uh, heading west, uh, I would think that you would take a right uh, when the light changed. Uh, you would come down uh, Montague Road and, um, and, 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 and either cross Yep, that's where the existing crosswalk is where you're indicating now. Yeah. So a person could walk their bike across, you know, to the to the library side of Montague Road. Right. The west. So that's that's the official crossing there. And 
If they were coming from uh, the Meadow Street side heading east, again, they would wait for the light to change. Uh, they would turn. Uh, I think they would come, come down here um, uh, on Sunderland Road. And uh, uh, there's another crosswalk right here. Yep. Mm -hmm. That would be the place for them to, to stop, uh, to walk their bike down the, 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 the walkway and, and over here to the, to the bike rack. Uh, and then the person uh, coming uh, from, uh, uh, from the east would walk across here, down the sidewalk, up this sidewalk, um, and, and to the bike rack there on the north side. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you. And um, thank you, Johanna. Uh, uh, Doug Marshall, please. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Kuhn Riddle, for coming back. Uh, it's nice to see how things have evolved. Um, I basically had one one question. If you could go to uh, some of the elevations. Um, yeah, that one's fine. I wanted to just ask about the size of the window on the east end of the addition. That those two windows, and there's a similar two windows on the on the north side. Both of them, both pairs are looking in or out of the meeting room. Are those uh, intended to be operable sashes? Those look huge. Chris, Chris, you're muted. Sorry about that. Thank you, Doug. Yeah. Uh, uh, they 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 are large windows. Um, I I think the. Uh, I, I think the intention is yes, that they would be operable. Um, whether they, you know, exactly what kind of operable, I think we, we haven't really gotten into. The, the idea is that they would be, um, the mullions would, uh, it would indicate a double hung uh, condition. Whether they would be double hung or, or something else, I think is, is something that we would explore in the, in the next design phase. Okay, so I guess one of the reasons I'm asking about those two pairs and the size of them um, is that I'm I'm getting sort of funny. I'm getting a little bit of double readings of the scale of these buildings because there's times I want to see those as sort of regular double hungs, in which case the the buildings are very diminutive and. And in uh, you know, but if I look at the other windows, particularly in the original building, you know, now I think these are really big windows. You know, a scale figure kind of would help. But um, is that intentional? I guess is is you know, or or why not use similar sized windows and and be a little and and have some of the embellishments around them where the you know, like they did with the original building and you did with some of these other windows? Well, that's a, that's a, that's a good question. Um, we, we, we made a conscious decision to make these windows uh, as well as the, the windows on the, on the north side. Um, I don't have that elevation here. Uh, the, the bay on the north side has, has a similar size double window. Um, we, we did make a conscious decision to make those windows bigger. Um, uh, for, for a couple of reasons. I think first and foremost, we really wanted to, to, to connect the interior to the exterior with more glazing. Um, we wanted to bring more light into the interior. Uh, we really wanted to take advantage of the fact that, that uh, this addition, while, while it takes its, its uh, stylistic and, 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 and form uh, cues from the existing uh, it's a it's a contemporary structure. It's 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 it, it wasn't designed and built in 1893. So uh, our thought was is that especially in the context of these bays, uh, which project out, um, that we could take a little a little license with the scale and uh, and updating of the windows. Um, I, I, I think it's as simple as that. Uh, although Charles, you may want to chime in and, and talk about this a little bit. No, that no, that's true. And and actually, what happens is that there's an interesting sort of interplay of scale between the two buildings themselves, the way they're the way they're tied together with the smaller uh, windows, and then the scale and reading of the two bays: the bay here that faces uh, east, and the north-facing bay off the off of the entry, and. 
and they and they're sort of working at their own um, logical scale, which I think is kind of an interesting interplay. Also, they're 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 serving a room which is not which is I think going to be the biggest space in, in in the combined two buildings, the library and the addition. And in terms of like being a, being a being a space, it's welcoming and inviting people in. It also wants to be flooded with light and have views to the outside. And sort of Chris alluded to connection to the site. And so um, that you know that that was our thought with with these windows. And it's it's a uh, it's uh, it's it's you know it was it's a, it's, it was an iterative and intuitive process and and this is this is sort of where we landed with all you know balancing all of those sort of various right. considerations. Okay, um, I guess I will I will comment that if it's a meeting room that's used for uh, projection or you know there may there will be times you need to have those completely blacked out and you won't want the glare from the eastern sun uh necessarily on the table surface so um i'm sure you'll work that out as you get farther into the design uh on the flat roof will it be an internally drained flat roof or will it have a slope with a, a gutter along it i'm thinking it's going to be an internal drain that's the cleanest easiest way to do it and and you know but it's not gonna have a parapet so there, it'll if, if you know if something ever happens with the roof drain you know, the right. water will naturally sort of flow off. It's not going to be like a bathtub. It'll be, you know, low pitch, eighth of an inch to a foot or a quarter inch to a foot to a, a flat internal, to an internal roof drain. Okay, thank you. Good comments, Doug. Uh, thank you. And Maria Chow, please. Uh, thanks. Thanks for coming back. Um, I wasn't going to actually comment on the windows, but I kind of agree that a meeting room you know, if you think about the scale of a space, having larger windows, if you, if you had drawn, well, you know, our purview isn't the interiors, but like an interior elevation would probably show that the scale of that space, those windows make sense. So it is a tricky thing to balance, you know, interior and exterior elevations, but it seems like maybe that might have been more like a, also an interior move. Um, my thing was actually, I, I love those little letters you added um, for the signage. It's like a little modern twist on um the building and i wonder if it's allowed <laughs> to have like a glow of light because a lot of events might happen at night if those lights if that signage can be you know just i know it won't be dark sky compliant but i wonder if there is um i think i've seen it in other places where it, it's just a um, a backlight in a way so that the letters really pop at night because i know you have those two acorn lights that match the town's mm -hmm. lights or something and um yeah. I right. think they probably do reach that wall, but it's a nice little feature, you know, and, um, just just yeah. a thought to kind of throw out there. And and um, and then the last thing I was going to come out on was the, um, I know you're still studying the colors, but I would also offer to maybe study uh, hardy plank because you'll probably have, you know, it won't have as much of a textured natural look as the wood cedar shingles, but the durability and low maintenance might be a nice thing about the hardy hardy planks shingle like i think that they have um because they're paintable and you know i know you're studying the paint but just as you're moving forward that you know as far as thinking about long-term yeah. uh maintenance and um that kind of thing but otherwise um yeah i think every iteration you know it's just getting closer and closer to a nicer sort of final product so i appreciate you coming back thank you thanks maria um any comment, um, Mike, Chris, or Charles on that? Um, well, I was thinking about backlighting the aluminum block letters also, and Chris and I had a discussion about it. And I think I think where you know we didn't really finalize it. We I think we both had different opinions about it. But um, as I'm as I'm looking at this, I wonder about the idea of even um, having like a wall washer light in the eave socket and just kind of washing that wall with a little bit of with, with, with a, a, a pool of light as another way of, of lighting that lighting that sign up but um i think that's something we should what we should definitely think about what do you I, think I, I i would agree with that yeah yeah i think that would look really nice um we do the 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 sidewalk light is in close proximity to you know where you're showing that that north amherst um public library lettering on the building yeah so we we might move 
that light out or perhaps consider putting like a back shield on that light if that's possible so that we don't get so much glare from from you know that fixture back to the wall because that would obviously i think that would conflict with you know a wash a soft wash coming down from the eaves but um right so we'd have to look at that the location of that you know po pole fixture yeah I mean, we might want to look at those right now as I'm looking at those two fixtures, they sort of have, uh, uh, they're, they're not sort of geometrically locked in with the building nope. plan at all. Nope. We, we might want to look at the locations of those and, and put them somewhere that where they're relating to the building and the plan um, in a coordinated way. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't know how the board feels about this, but even pushing them out closer to Sunderland or Montague, you know, we, we, we have some more, uh, light washing out or out into the public way, which would help improve, you know, um, you know, navigation for pedestrians or whatever, you know, toward this site. Because obviously, once you get there, I think you can figure out where the door is on the north side, you know, and um, mm -hmm. certainly we, we, we need the lights to um, light up the parking spaces, but we've got significant overlap on the lighting. So, you know, if we if, if the town would approve some more wash out onto the sidewalk and the road um, we could kind of push those lights further away from each other okay um maybe we got uh, more discussion on that uh, andrew Thanks, Jack. Um, thanks mm -hmm. uh, for the updated presentation. Um, I just wanted to uh, address the parking real quick. So I, I think, you know, this was a, a nice kind of clean and simple solution. The space was there, it was already paved. Um, and apologies if you mentioned this and I just uh, missed it. Was there going to be any lighting um, on, on serving these parking bays here or would they just be uh, going to be existing? I, I think, I think that's a good point. Um, I would like to, I think I would like to look at the, you know, there's different distribution patterns that, you know, the lights can are capable of. So these ones that are, that we're using now have a more linear uh, distribution pattern. We can look at a distribution pattern that has a more square or blockier kind of throw so that you'd get more light um, being thrown to the north if the, if the parking spaces are there. I think that's usually pretty standard. There's there's four basic distribution patterns, you know, for for lighting. So we could certainly look at that. Um, I can't remember what it is if it's type B or or something like that. Um, but it has you know uh, a, 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 a further throw to the front. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I'd I'd love to know okay. a little bit more about that. Certainly. Yeah. That and makes, then that makes sense. <clears throat> and then um, I, I I know nothing about PBTA ridership and like this. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily an issue whatsoever, but when I when when you were first presenting this, I was just imagining other other parts of the world where I've seen things like this, um, where you're adding parking spaces that are probably not going to be used a lot of the time next to a mass transit stop. And like, do we do we feel like folks from Sunderland might use that as a parking ride? Um, you know, I, I don't I don't know that it's legitimate, but I just did want to share that that thought that had popped in my mind that. For folks coming down 116, this might be easier for them to, to just park in this lot, which is going to be only sporadically used and largely in, in the evening, probably, uh, based on comments you presented last go round, where, where the, the usage is really pretty low. Um, so, again, I don't know that there's anything to do, but uh, I just did want to share that thought. Thanks. Thank Andrew. you. Uh, Mike, do, do you, can you brief I, us on the, uh, well, I, in terms of coming from the North, uh, well, first of all, okay, let me remind on, on, on this plan that you're seeing now, the bus stop on the East side of Montague road is, could you, could you move the cursor, the hand down a little bit, Chris? Yeah, right there. That's the bus stop, um, going no, in the northerly direction. I don't know exactly where the bus stop is coming from, you know, driving in a southerly direction. I think it's further to the north, up toward the, or maybe even across the bridge to the, of the Mill River. Um, that's kind of far, 
I, you know, to, to, you know, to come and park in that lot and then walk back to the bus stop. If you're, you know, if you're going into UMass or, or whatever, um, I, isn't, is there a bus stop in front of the black Walnut Inn? I, I, that might be the next location where there's a stop headed South. I, I, I think you might be right about that, Mike. Uh, I think on the other, yeah, to the South of Meadow and Pine. So, I mean, it, it, my gut reaction is that it's not likely that somebody would come and park their car there all day in the library lot. But, you know, I mean, sir, it, could, it could happen. There's, there's obviously no guarantees. Um, and I, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure what, what commercial property owners do or whatever to prevent people from using kind of the parking for, you know, their own <laughs> kind of uses um, or desires. So, a Andrew, I, I have to say, I'm not sure if you're suggesting that we explore allowing people to park there or if you're concerned about people parking there. Um, yeah, it, it would be more of the latter. I'm, I'm again, not advocating for any change in, in uh, what we're proposing here. I just, I wasn't sure if folks knew enough about the sub, the the uh, the bus lines, the stops. You know, it's an easy out to just whiz up Sunderland Road to, to head north. Um, but yeah, I know there's ample parking across the street. Again, I hmm. it's just an observation to make. I, I I will say, I mean, this is certainly anecdotal, uh, but I I drive by here on a regular basis um, and. That entire north uh, parking lot, uh, you know, is is available. It's not striped or anything right now, but um, I, I do uh, I, I do see sometimes a handful of cars there. But I've I've never really seen a large number of cars. And uh, again, it's just anecdotal uh, based on my experience. But uh, I think because of the locations of the of the bus stops and. Um, and the proximity to this parking parking area, I, I would guess it's probably not going to be an issue. Uh, I would say that if it does become an issue, um, then um, you know we would we would have to or or, or the town would have to uh, look at ways to try to dissuade people from parking there. Well, no, I, 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 I'm sorry, Jack. Just one last thought is I wonder if PVTA might be interested in having a stop here with it now being kind of a. a revitalized library site. Thanks. Thank you. So uh, I'm going to, Jen has her hand up. I'm going to have a bump uh, uh, Guilford up. Um, Guilford? Out. Sorry, I just wanted to weigh in on the parking here. Um, we already have the problem with university students parking in this village center. Um, they actually park at Mill River at the recreation area. That's closest. That's the closest parking area to the southbound bus. There's a mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the bus stop is up towards Mill River more. Um, they park in that little parking lot by the the pool close to the road and walk up, and then they just have a short walk back because they have to walk from. Riverside Park Plaza back up to the parking lot. So we do already have that little problem going on now. Mm. And we have talked to PVTA about moving the stops, but they kind of like them where they are right now. And one is in front of the Black Walnut Inn. And the second one is in front of Mill River. And the third one is over by Cole's Lumber. And it kind of serves the um, survival center. So it's kind of a loop. And there's also a new one on Cole's uh, uh, Coles. There's a, there's four in this little village center right now, and that's what they want to keep. Hmm. So just so you know, we, we already kind of have people parking and riding the bus and using town lots for their parking spaces. Thank you. Uh, Janet? Um, thank you. I, I, I just, I don't want to say enough how much, I, uh, how much I love this project. I think it's just beautiful. Um, I have a few things to say. One of them is um, in terms of the parking, like, I'm not in love with asphalt, but I do think it's important to have enough spaces so people can use this 
beautiful library that's going to have all this expanded capacity. Um, and so um, I think Meg Gage had mentioned, you know, using those kind of open blocks that let, you know, grass grow in and things like that. So I think, is that an option that you could look at um, instead of just tarring up the whole thing? Um, is that, you know, I know that's more expensive too, but I just the question is like, is that a possibility just to keep, um, you know, the more drainage on the site, natural drainage on the site and maybe looking less asphalty? Um, and then um, the other question I have is maybe partly for Christine Brestrup is, I couldn't really find the management plan. And so it seems like, I don't know if I just have lost control of my paper or that it seems like new things have been added. And I, I don't like when we referred to in the draft findings, like, or the, um, I couldn't figure out what the management planners. And so I was wondering if there's an, a final document yet that could include different updates, including the parking spaces. And then when I looked at the design review board, and the Disability Access Advisory Committee, like, has have their recommendations been incorporated into that plan? Um, and if it has, then we, you know, maybe you don't need to go over it and things like that. Like with the disability access, you know, there was questions about a bell, a backup generator, um, widening the hallway, a place of refuge, which I didn't even know what that was. But you know, are those things been incorporated? And I just don't know they're there. So um, I can thank answer you. one of your questions, which is the management plan. So the management plan was included in the packet that went out on um, for the March 17th meeting. Mm -hmm. So there is a management plan. It's you know it's pretty simple. Basically says the town's going to do everything, um, but it is in there. Pam, can you find the management plan from the March 17th packet? It was, uh, you know, part of the application. Um, Is it that yeah. single page, like that page? It's like a pay page with double sides. Oh, okay. So, um, so I wonder if we could have a, an updated plan that incorporated more issues. And did did that plan address the issues raised by the design review board or the disability access? No, it was produced before the two meetings. So, so Chris, like, should. Should we talk about those issues now, or um, how do we incorporate their suggestions and concerns? I think um, if Jack agrees, then um, that would be a good thing to do to talk about their their ideas and concerns. If Jack thinks that's appropriate, would that be like uh, Tom or to bring in the DRB and? I would love to pass that off to Tom. <laughs> we we have those documents as part of the packet. Yeah, I I I have it here. Um, where am I looking? Yeah, all the notes from our meeting are, are here, and the recommendations are here, and um, I think a lot of the a lot of the same recommendations that we had were raised by the DRB as well. Um, and some of the things that Chris had addressed in terms of the aesthetic um for the entryway the um um curve above the windows is an extraneous detail and some other elements you know including color um were part of that debate and discussion and, and the team did address a lot of those um doug and maria as well the double windows um on the on those two facades came up in that meeting um and their scale so um so those things were raised and discussed um, um and they were very similar and I, um, I think signage was really the only other thing that was raised and that, that's been addressed here as well so um as far as i can remember um, i just reviewed the document again today but um but as far as i can remember those were the kind of main things that came up um the entryway the windows, the signage, and the extraneous detail around the the, uh, um, the soffit. Um, I think that was oh, and the screen around the um, um, mechanical, and those seem to all have been addressed. Um, okay, and then on the disability access advisory committee, they were. I think that there was going to be a bell on the chairlift. Is that right? Uh, yes, we um, it, 
the the intention is that we we have a list of the of the suggestions, comments, and concerns uh, from the Disability Access uh, Committee. Um, essentially, what we've said is that we will uh, we will try uh, to the extent that we can to incorporate all of their comments. Uh, the 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 bell on the lift, the the area of refuge inside, uh, the generator, etc. Um, there are some issues that, that may or may not be permitted by code, uh, but to the extent that, that they are permitted, we, we will certainly explore them in the next design phase and try to incorporate, you know, all or as many of them as we can in, into the design. What, what is a place of refuge? I didn't understand that. Uh, so a, a place of refuge is uh, if, if, if there's someone with a disability in their wheelchair bound, and they, they can't get out of a building because of stairs, et cetera. Uh, it's a place to, to provide, uh, a place for them to go uh, to be in a safe location that the uh, emergency services knows about. And during an emergency, uh, the fire department or, or other service can come and, uh, and get them safely out of the building from that area of refuge within the building. Okay. Well, okay, that sounds really important. Um, my my last comment is, um, I don't. I think the lighting plan is a little. Um, it's it's it seems kind of. Um, it needs sort of more detail, and so, um, in terms of where the lighting is going to be, and then I couldn't tell from the the picture of the lighting plan. Are there going to be um, lights like at the doorways, and are they going to stay lit? Because that's I've noticed that in the. Um, different um, buildings in town, there's like, you know, like on the Munson Library, there's a light on the doorway that's always lit, kind of a safety thing, as well as at night helping that. So I couldn't see that, but I was just wondering if the lighting plan could be sort of more detailed or a little more clear. We, we uh, that's, a, that's a good question. We do have, um, I, I'll be honest, I, I can't remember if it's one light or two lights in the, in the ceiling of the entry. Uh, to illuminate that that uh, that covered entry area on the north. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so the the intention certainly is to have that uh, that entry, the covered entry, illuminated. Um, uh, and and uh, I, I guess what I would say is we can certainly clarify that uh, on 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 the lighting plan. Yeah, I just didn't see it. I kind of assumed it might read there, but it, you know, I just it was you, the plan is hard to read for some reason. I don't know if it's just tiny or whatever. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Oh, and then in terms of the parking lot, like would you consider using that kind of open, I don't know, if it's brick or something like that. I think they're expensive because I remember when we talked about it for yep. the common school. Yep. It it is a little bit more expensive than asphalt paving, um but I think that that's that's I mean, I'm going to have to let Guilford make the call on that, but I think that's, you know, that would be a very reasonable thing to do for, for when those, those Northern spaces, for instance, become a permanent fe feature, you know, with, with the demolition of that garage, I think that'd be the perfect use for it. Cause those are likely to be less used than the spaces, you know, that are facing the building directly. And, you know, so um, it makes sense to, to, capitalize on you know those types of pavers for infiltration and treatment of yeah. um the runoff okay thank you great um so tom you, is your hand up was that residual no that's up um, okay yeah no i have i have another question in regard to um the the parking area and mike i think i just need some clarity on this trade-off we're getting. And so um, the last time we looked at the plan, that swath of land where those parking spots are now was a swale, there was a water catchment that would bring water to the drain. What I liked about that, <coughs> excuse me, um, was it created a, an experiential or visual separation from this area of the, the library to this kind of raw vacant lot that's there right? <laughs> right right so so in my mind that was a nice feature and and i feel like the trade-off now is that there's just spray painted lines and a continuous sea of asphalt and 
I'm curious why such a drastic trade-off. Like, can there not be any grass along the back, like three inches, or can there not be anything that like separates these things from each other, even with one cut that lets cars or trucks or something through because they couldn't have gotten through before. So I guess I'm curious about what, what that threshold is. And I know we're spending money that's going to disappear maybe later, but I guess I'm looking for something there so it doesn't feel like this parking lot is just right. part of a sea of asphalt. And I guess I'm wondering what the trade-off is and whether it's money or or procedure or what. Um, there's probably you know not much difference when it comes uh, from a monetary standpoint because before we were going to remove pavement and then you know turn it into grass. Now we're keeping the pavement, but adding a little bit to blend to blend the new pavement, which is higher, you know, back down to the existing. But, you know, I, I you know, I think you're right. Visually, you know, if it if it kind of like, you know, spills over into the former garage parcel, you know, you don't you don't get kind of a, a, a clear separation of, of the uses, you know, or, or the two parcels. But um, I think that we'd have to look at the, you know, what what needs to drive in and out of that building, you know, maybe, maybe we can add a, you know, like whatever, a minimal green strip or something like that. If we can't, then, you know, maybe we, maybe we can, you know, install some bollards of some sort at least to, you know, provide the visual separation, if you will, from, you know, <clears throat> separating that sea of asphalt. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, I really like the idea of in the future that, you know, what, what, can end up there is and is an actual rain garden that functions as such rather than you know we just had a grass swale it wasn't it wasn't a rain garden yeah. and certainly would treat runoff you know in a minimal way but a rain garden is going to do a lot more yeah. um i mean i don't want to put more work on the on the gardeners that do a ton of work there <laughs> now but if you gave them a you know 12 inches of something <laughs> to plant they'd probably find something to, to grow there, you know, and, and to help make that visual, you know, break that I think we need. So I, I think I would just say it would be something I'd love to see considered as we're digging that or as we're cutting that, to sort of think about how we, um, how we, because that, that is a really nasty looking parking area. Um, and, and, you know, whatever we can do to separate these two visual would be, would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tom and Mike. Uh, Guilford, please. Um, th this is more of a, it is more of a money issue than it is um, anything else. We're working in the fixed financial realm of what the donor is willing to give and the requirements of the donor. Um, the donor has made it quite clear they do not want to pay for anything beyond the building, basically, and what's technically required for the building. Um, so we're, we're trying to keep the donor's wishes intact and still trying to meet the needs of the library. Um, we just have to agree that when the road work is, when the road and intersection work is done, we're going to have to take a lot of the things you're talking about now and roll that into the road work, lighting, pedestrians, changing the parking lot, having more green and more, uh, more aesthetically pleasing lawn for the library. Um, we actually still don't know where the entrance to the library will be when we realign the intersection either. The, inter the, the driveway entrance could be through part of the garage or where the garage is now. So we might mm. have to rearrange things. So we are, when you, as you start moving away from the actual building addition, we're adding money to the donor who doesn't want to really pay for those. And then we're getting farther into the unknown world of what we're doing with the road realignment is really the two issues that are driven here, driving this. So, so Guilford, I, I believe I read somewhere where this North Amherst intersection is going to be, you know, delayed somewhat, didn't get a, you know, approved. So how many years are we looking at before uh, that intersection, you know, comes to fruition, the, 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 you know, the redesign there? So, so the money for this to, to start the redesign and move that along was delayed a year. So it's not going to get, we're not going to start it this July and go into um, design over the winter here. We'll start next July and go into that winter design, doing redesign. 
that's all it happened. It just slid one year. Ah, so it's not too far off in the future then. No, it, it's it's the it's the next Q, it's the next big project in the queue after we finished the Mass Works project at Palm Royal 116. And then we have a uh, North North Common and probably two more in there that are under design now. And then this will be moving forward. So to, to Tom's point, I, I, I feel like this is really like a temporary, you know, what's being proposed is really has a, a, a very uh, short lived sort of thing because of the redesign, but um, I don't know if you feel the same way or not, but there's a lot of moving parts here on, on, on the project. So uh, let me see who, if there's any other hands up. So um, Chris, you know, we have some, uh, you know, draft findings. Would it be prudent to uh, edit those with the comments that we have uh, today and, and, and wrap those up at a, or can we do this on the fly tonight? Um, well, it seemed like um, from the comments that um, Janet in particular made um, that there are some things that need to come back, like a revised management plan and um, the lighting. Looking at the lighting again and yeah. So I think, you know, in order to clarify those things, and, and making sure that all the DAAC comments and the DRB comments are incorporated into the uh, design, it's probably worth it to have one more meeting and have the okay. members come and tell the board how the DRB comments and the DAAC comments have been incorporated and how they've dealt with the lighting questions that Janet has brought up. And um, if there is anything else that people want to do about the parking lot, or access or anything like that, or if all of those questions have been um, answered. I just feel like there are things that are sort of hanging. Yeah, but I know some, somehow we, we need to like, um, you know, within quotation marks that this is, this is all gonna change because there's this, it's this major construction project coming down the line, um, you know, for the intersection um, that's going to incorporate you know, a portion of this project, but. Well, what if we had one more meeting and, and the designers brought back whatever they could do to resolve some of these issues? And then um, I will try to incorporate some of those things into the findings. And yeah. I did come up with some draft conditions, but I haven't had a chance to review those with Rob Mora yet. And um, so I hate to say it, but maybe it's worth it just to have. Okay. One. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, you know, uh, Mike, uh, Chris and Charles, you know, definitely did a, a good job responding to our comments from, you know, the previous, you know, uh, meeting. And um, so what are we looking at for schedule? I don't have uh, that in front of me, but. Um, there's a meeting coming up on, um, there's one on April 21st. We're having a, an interim meeting if everybody, well, that's going to be talked about later, but. I was hoping to have an interim meeting on the 14th to talk about zoning. Um, yeah. And the regularly scheduled meeting is on the 21st. So we could have them come back on the 21st if that would be suitable to everybody. Is that good, Mike? Chris, Charles? Are we, are we good with that, Guilford? For um, that's what, two weeks from now? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Jack, I think somebody has a hand up in the crowd, in the audience. Yes. Mr. Marshall also has his hand raised. Okay, let me let me get Doug first. Uh, Doug? Yeah, I guess I, I just wanted to say, I thought I heard Chris say that the intent was that they would take care of at least all the DRB meeting comments when they get further into design. So... I don't, I, I'm not expecting any evidence that they're all addressed and I'm not expecting any assurance or promise that they all will be addressed, but that the design team will evaluate whether they are all allowed and appropriate. 
So, you know, I, I guess I, I wouldn't expect anything more at this point in design. So I'm not sure why we would have them come back, at least for those kinds of meeting, those kinds of comments. Um, and um, so I'm, I'm a little surprised that we're headed toward another meeting, given that this one is the second meeting and we spent an hour and a half on it. Thank you. So can we can we power you know power through this uh, or not you know Chris I, I, we we have these draft conditions here and we we'd have to kind of like again on the fly <laughs> get them all right but we don't have I think that's going to take a while yeah okay sort of tone of the conversation yeah. tonight so Doug um, I think. I, I appreciate your point. <laughs> I would love to close this, but uh, but let, let's get some public comment here. Um, we have Larry Zakiris. Um, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, but state your name and address, please. Uh, Larry Zacharias at uh, 519 Montague Road. And um, I just had two questions. First of all, on the parking, um, I don't think of board should look should be too concerned about the parking because there's a lot of parking across the street both at the old school and in the riverside shops there's the whole mill river area that has parking and then at worst uh, the north square uh area has a huge amount of parking which is all accessible by uh sidewalks so um i wouldn't put too much of an emphasis certainly not on spending money on the parking in light of what uh, Mr. Morning says um, about the intersection. Uh, the one thing I would say, though, is that the sketch uh, for putting in additional parking there, uh, it looked like the two bays or the two groups of parking were very close together. And I think a lot of people are going to back out into each other and it looks a little bit precarious. So better to leave fewer cars, you know, spray paint fewer spaces and make sure that people can get in and out easily. Um, the other question I had, and maybe you said so, the architect said something about this, but the flat roof in between the two buildings um, seems like you're asking for trouble. I mean, if the snow falls down on the flat roof and it gets into the interstices uh, or whatever you call them, the, you know, the flashing points, um, it, it just doesn't seem like a healthy situation unless you, there's a way for the snow to slide off the flat roof in between, or else you're just going to get a huge snow buildup um, in there. So uh, that's something I think, if it hasn't been considered, should be considered. So that's it. Thank, Thank you, Larry. Uh, Janet Keller, state your name and address, please. And Janet. Hi there, everybody. Thanks. Um, I um, had a question regarding the parking and the functional rain garden. Um, uh, Mike indicated that that could be, um, you know, seriously functional. And I, I missed uh, the previous meeting, so I, I don't know what led up to the discussion uh, of adding so much parking and I, you know, I'm agnostic about all of this. I'm, I'm really asking, um, you guys are the experts. Um, uh, if, if you had your way, um, what do you feel is best for that spot? Or is, is that parking thing a settled issue? And I'm, I shouldn't even be asking this. So, hey, Janet, what's your ad your your residence address? Oh, sorry, I live at um, uh, 120 Pulpit Hill Road. Very good, thank you so much. Um, you want me to Mike? talk about that? Oh, Chris, go ahead. So, the last time we met, there was a lot of discussion about the fact that there were only 10 parking spaces provided on the site, and the requirement uh, of the zoning bylaw was to have 25 spaces. 
Um, there was a lot of discussion about being able to park across the street, either at Riverside Shops, which is a private property, and we don't really have permission to park over there, or to park at the North Amherst School. Um, in either case, you have to cross um, either Sunderland Road or Montague Road. Some um, people will be coming to this library at night um, in order to go to meetings in that meeting room. Um, members of the board didn't really uh, like the idea of putting people in danger by crossing those roads at night when there really isn't adequate crosswalks or lighting. And so they felt strongly that there was a need to put more parking on the site. So the designers have gone to a great extent to um, find places on the site to provide uh, the 25 spaces that are required. So they don't need to add, ask for a modification of the parking requirement anymore. So um, I think that they, you know, they've done a good job with that. And as a result, they have had to um, eliminate the swale that was going to accept stormwater. And uh, that's too bad, but um, we've been told by Mr. Mooring that uh, efforts will be made to solve that problem in the future when the um, intersection is re redesigned. Um, as far as I can tell by looking at the grading, the uh, runoff from the parking lot will go in the direction of a catch basin that is either new or going to, or is existing on Sunderland Road. And so I think, you know, overall the drainage will be handled. This isn't going to turn into a, um, you know, a flood zone or a sea of ice. Um, but in the future, uh, it may be possible to handle the stormwater in a better manner. So that's kind of the story as far as I understand it. Thank you. Very good. Thanks. So um, can we um, you know, finish this up uh, on April 21st with, you know, Chris, I think is going to you know, rework, you know, work with the design team and uh, you know, edit our, our findings and conditions. And I think it would be helpful if the design team did address the issues that were brought up by the DAAC and the DRB in writing. Whether you can solve them now or not, it would be nice to just put it down on paper and say, well, we can solve this issue now and here's what we're going to do, or we can solve this issue in the future in some manner that is undetermined, but at least address the issues because I think um, this they're going to be brought up again next time if if you don't have something in writing. Um, the other thing is to um, update the management plan, and that's probably on us. I don't know who actually did the management plan, whether it was Mike or somebody in my office or Guilford, um, but we could put our heads together and see what we could do to uh, beef up the management plan a bit. Um, and were there other issues? I think um, Janet had some issues about lighting. So, um, you know, thinking about exactly where the lights on the north side of the building are going to be placed to uh, the best advantage to light up the access to the uh, building and clarifying what kind of lighting that you have um, in the entryway to um, allow people to get into the building at night. And um, so those are the things that I remember. Yeah. And I don't know if Janet has other issues that she feels need to be addressed, but those are the things that I would bring and Then forward. we talked about the, the signage there uh, with, you know, that wanted to be presented and kind of separated from the, from the two, um, you know, light poles out there, the but pole, you have the pole fixtures. Yeah. So yeah, some, some I'm tweaking. Happy to, I'm happy. Janet. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. I was going to say, I think that, uh, Chris, you covered that, and um, I'm happy to donate some perennials for the perimeter that Tom was talking about. So, if you want to create a little veg, I have tons of stuff. I can. I'm sure lots of gardeners would donate. So, Jeff, Mr. McDougall has his hand yeah. raised. Yes, Andrew. Thanks. I, I was just going to add real quick, Chris, that that uh, Mike was was going to look into the lighting options to reach the the far parking bay as well. I'd asked him about that. Yeah, we will we'll try to get more light to the north. And again, I mean, you know, we're in a kind of a tough situation. We don't know what's going to happen in the future, but certainly if the entrance is realigned or whatever, I'm, you know, there's probably going to be some lighting associated with that as well, you know, being added and as well as the rain garden and, and things like that. 
So, it, so Mike, when you when the the how flexible is it? Uh, you know, if you were to how can, flexible can you, is the lighting? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you get one uh, configuration in there. Is it? Is yeah. it? Is, can well, you? We'll, we'll get. We'll, we will be able to get some light thrown to the north but it, it won't it you know if we're if we're putting lighting on the one side you know on the on the far side of the sidewalk we're not going to get we're not going to get what the lighting designers like to have for lighting levels in a parking lot we're not going to get that level all the way to the very north edge that's 58 feet away or well 58 plus counting you know not including the sidewalk so but we will get some lighting there so it'll be safer for people when they get out of their cars but but can you use those same lighting fixtures and and I'm, I have to alter talk. them yes. with regard to the, the reconstruction pretty, that's going to happen in a couple of years. I am pretty confident. Yeah, I'm pretty confident we can, and, okay. and I'll get in touch with the um, the the rep for the um, yeah the light fix the light uh, product tomorrow. You want that flexibility? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. So, are you good for the twenty first? I think so. Yeah. Yes, we're good for the twenty first. Okay. Do you want to take a vote to continue mm -hmm. the public hearing to the twenty first? Yeah. Do I hear a, a motion for that? Chris, mm -hmm. do we need to have an exact time? Um. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Six thirty-five. Six thirty-five. All right. So, Tom, you had your hand up. I was just going to move to. Uh, Continue. Yeah. Okay. And, and a second? A second. All right, Janet. So um, we'll do a roll call here. Uh, any discussion? Nope. Okay. So uh, uh, Maria? Yes. Andrew? Aye. And Doug? Aye. Tom? Yeah. Janet? Aye. Johanna, aye, and myself as an I. So we will see you uh, on the twenty first. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. a lot. Thanks. Okay, we'll see you then. All righty. Bye bye. Thank you. Good night. Night. Okay, so I have to kind of rework my screens here. Um, but we have uh, next is, um, and again, it's eight. Uh, we're getting into the evening here. But um, so we have a joint hearing with the tree warden on the, the scenic uh, tree removal to allow space for a driveway to service a new single family home, Flat Hills Road, map 9A, parcel 30. The public shade tree impacted by this project includes the following trees. Uh, it looks like a seven inch diameter red maple, nine inch red maple, and a 10 inch uh, red oak. So uh, I'm just looking for. So you have Anna Novi Cook is here, and um, Alan Snow is also here. His video is off, but here okay. he is. Here's Alan. Good, good. So I, I should add, um, in accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 40, uh, Section 5C, Center Roads, and Chapter 87, uh, Section 3, Shade Trees, this joint public hearing between the Planning Board and the Tree Warden has been duly advertised in the Daily uh, Hampshire Gazette and posted in Town Hall. And then I've stated the other things uh, with regard to this. So uh, any board disclosures? I see none, and we ask the applicant to present the project, please. You're muted. Is that Anna? Anna. Okay. Unmuted, sorry. Um, I'm Anna Cook from Integrity Construction in North Amherst, um, and the project site in question, uh, we're intending to build a single family home. And so we're requesting permission to take down a couple of trees for um, the curb cut to get the driveway into the property. We've requested permission for three trees. Our intention ultimately is only to take down two of the three. 
um, but we have not exactly d determined where the driveway, where the curb cut's going to want to go. So we wanted to have a little flexibility there. Very good. Um, and we had a um, we had a site uh, site visit. Anybody want to give a site visit report? Mm. Who was there? Oh, Janet, please. So we um, went to Flat Hills Road and we observed the two um, the the site that um, was, it was marked um, its width by red, um, pink ribbons. And there are three trees. Um, I think it's two maples and an oak. And it, the, um, depending on where the driveway goes, it looks like the tree in the middle has to go no matter what. And then one of the trees on each side has to go. And we discussed um, the width of the driveway, which I believe was, um, had only to be 16 feet. And we also talked about like whether a fire truck would need something wider, but it turns out the truck can get in, but needs a wider um, place if it was you know, to set up its side bases and stuff like that. And that would be further down the driveway. Um, was there anything else? Um, it was, the trees are actually fairly substantial. And then there was a discussion about um, where the fees for the removing the tree um, would go. And Mr. Snow said that it would basically go into a fund to buy new trees um, and put them in a different location. Um, and then also, I mean, there's a fair amount of quick, there's some traffic on the road that's kind of quick moving. And then we also observed where the, the um, public way ends, which seemed to be about like 20 feet, but I'm not going to be quoted on that. Is there, is there anything else there? Oh, we also talked about where um, the house would be built, which was not quite you know, figured out yet. And then the, the, the lot itself is like four acres. So it's a fairly large lot. Chris, did I forget anything? Sounds, sounds right to me. Great. Uh, Alan, do you have anything to add? Um, I, I can I'll add that uh, I met on site with uh, representatives from uh, Integrity Builders. Um, we talked at length about um, location and uh, to meet their customers' goals of where they want their house and driveway to be. Um, we chose the area with the fewest trees. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's probably the best location to get into that uh, heavily wooded area. So no matter where you put a driveway, you're going to be cutting down a few trees. Um, a few public shade trees, that is. Um, so this seems to be the best location at this point. Thanks, Alan. Um, any other board comments? No, nope. and um, flip over to the public and uh, Shoshana King, state your name and address, please. Hi, Shoshana. Dona King, uh, 46 Rolling Green Drive in Amherst. Uh, I'm representing the um, Amherst Public Shade Tree Committee. We met today also on the site, and um, we agree that um, the best efforts have been made to um, have the least amount of impact on the public shade tree um, trees that are there. And uh, we look forward to being able to plant new trees with the funds generated from those trees. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, um, whoops. And so we, um, again, uh, Alan will, has a vote and the planning board has a vote as I understand, Chris. Okay, so is there a motion to, to uh, accept the proposal and close the hearing. So Mr. McDougall's hand popped up and then Johanna. Okay, okay. so uh, Andrew? I, I would like to make that motion. I just have one question before, which is just, um, it's, it's for Alan. Um, at what point do we 
or maybe Mr. Sean, at what point do we expect to be able to plant those new trees? Like, is this something that would happen within the season or just kind of goes into a fund and trees are planted at some point in the future? Yes, so um, that money goes into a fund, which we use to you know, plant trees in areas in town where there aren't trees or there is a need for trees. Um, so it wouldn't necessarily be targeted for an area you know, um, immediately. Okay, thanks, I, I, I'll make the motion. Uh, Great, uh, Johanna? Second the motion. Great, okay, any discussion? Um, I see none, so let's uh, do a, a roll call here. Um, Maria? Approved. Andrew? Aye. Doug? Aye. Tom? Aye. Janet? Approved. And Johanna? Aye. And I am uh, an aye as well, so that's unanimous. And we flip over to Alan. I approve, <clears throat> excuse me, I approve. Okay. So did we get that right, Chris? Yep, thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you, Anna. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. All righty. Thank you, bye. And then we can go to the next, which is the, all right, more, more screens. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so this is the, all right, got to read the preamble here for this one. Um, so this is for um, the SPR 2021-08 Bang Center Ramp and Stairs, Boltwood Walk. And in accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 40A, this public hearing has been duly advertised and Notice thereof has been posted and is being held for the purpose of providing the opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding the SBR 2021-08 Bang Center Ramp and Stairs <coughs> Boat Will Walk. <clears throat> Request site plan review under section 3.342 of the zoning bylaw to construct a handicap accessible ramp and to repair and resurface the stairs at the south side of the Bangs uh, uh, Center for access to the John Musanti Health Center, which is on map uh, 14A, parcels 305, 343, and the Business General uh, Zoning District. So are there any uh, board member disclosures? I see none, okay. So we can have the applicant present that, which would be We ben? have Ben. Yeah, I'll be making a short Okay. And we also have Rob Mora here. He's the building commissioner and he, he can answer any questions. Okay. The presentation. Well, thanks everyone. Um, I did make a short little slideshow of uh, just things that were in the packet already. Um, just to go over today. Um, here we go. Are you seeing the like just the slide or do you see like the notes and stuff on this? See the notes as well, but they're kind of to the Okay. Too small. Okay, I, ne I never know. There you go. Yeah. Um, let's see. So just a little bit about this project. Um, the John Musanti Health Center opened in 2018. Um, it provides health care for everyone regardless of their ability to pay. So it's a uh, run by the Hill Hilltown Community Health uh, Center and it operates in the bank center. Um, in downtown Amherst, kind of in the rear of the bank center. Um, so right now there's uh, there, the accessible route, you know, the ADA route to the Musanti Health Center from the front of the bank center um, involves using the elevator. Um, and that's an issue because the bank center hours are not always in line with the um, Musanti Health Center hours. So if there, you know, there's times when the bank center is closed and there's then no accessible route down to the community health center. Um, and I think, you know, I wasn't here at the time, but my understanding is that, you know, as soon as the town knew that the health center was going into the bank center, then, you know, we knew that there needed to be an accessible route, you know, from the outside. So, you know, as soon as early as 
2018, um, the town was applying for grants to get the ramp built. I think there was two unsuccessful grant applications. And then we were fortunate enough uh, in March to get a um, $192,000 grant from MassDOT, uh, the Shared Streets Program, to construct uh, this ramp that runs from the Boltwood Garage uh, parking area down to the banks, down to the Missanti Health Center. Um, and I think, you know, due to this location, it's also, um, sorry, um, due to the location of where the ramp is, you know, it also provides um, access from the Ann Whalen and Clark apartments, which are, um, you know, uh, senior housing, you know, some low income, also uh, housing for the, for the dis disabled. So it's a important population to, you know, for accessibility is important to that population. And this ramp will also provide access from those apartment resident to the, for those residents in those apartment buildings to downtown Amherst and to the bank center. Um, it's worth noting too, there's also um, stairs uh, here that the town will, uh, we're probably likely to resurface as part of this project as well. So. Um, here's just the map of the area. You know, you're, uh, you know, you have the bank center here. The health center is in the back of the bank center. Um, Johnny's Tavern is here. This is the Boltwood Garage. Uh, it's off the map, but the Clark Apartments and Ann Whalen Apartments are to the right over here. And so the blue kind of shows just you know a very rough drawing of the location of the new ramp, and also where the stairs will be resurfaced. Um, I'll show some pictures in a second, but just so you know, this is, you know, there, there, this is a hillside with some grade difference, which is why the ramp is important there. Um, here's just the aerial, the same, same thing. And so, yeah, this is why I wish um, I could show the full screen just because I want to be able to zoom in. Um, yeah, there we go, I guess. So this is the, uh, you know, the most recent construction document for the ramp itself. Um, just, you know, this is the Boltwood garage, the very, you know, top right corner of the garage. And these are those stairs. Um, the idea is, you know, the, the ramp basically runs with the grade. Um, there's not a significant amount of grading that needs to be done. Um, it's, you know, has, it's at a, um, one to 12 grade for ADA accessibility. The uh, metal railings are, um, you know, provide, are at, I uh, forget the exact height they need to be for ADA level, but they're, they're at that. Um, there's a landing midway through the ramp. Um, and then where the, you know, it's an L-shaped ramp and at the, uh, where it changes direction, we're proposing a concrete landing uh, with four benches, uh, light pole, um, and this is just kind of like a, a you know, can be a, rec a, a place for people to rest, to gather, um, you know, for some, you know, the going up and down this ramp is, can be a lot of work. So it's important to have an area to rest. Uh, continues down and then into the, you know, sidewalk for the health center and the entrance is down here. So, um, you know, I think in terms of new additions, uh, we're relocating the bike rack, which is currently, you know, located right where we would want to, the ramp to come in. Um, we're proposing, um, obviously, the ramp, the rails, um, the four benches, a new one new light pole. You know, it's important to keep this area lit at night as people are coming up and down the ramp. Um, the I'll talk about the trees in a second, but there will be some tree removal and new trees planted. Um, and that was also part of the DRB recommendation, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and just so for some images, I probably should have started with some images just so we were all on the same page. Um, this is a panorama, so it, it, it kind of encompasses a lot, but it shows, you know, the this is basically you'd be where this image is taken is kind of where that landing is where the where the ramp changes direction so the ramp would start up here uh that bike rack would be relocated over here and the ramp would come down you know there'd be a sitting area here and then it would be continue off 
um, towards the sidewalk over here. Um, this is where the ramp would connect uh, up at the Boltwood garage. Again, the bike rack relocated to this area. Um, these are the existing stairs. Um, they are in a pretty rough shape. Um, there's, you know, there's actually chunks missing of the, of the treads at the top here. And, you know, there, there's, those cones have been in place for quite a while now to caution people. Um, you know, Mar Mary Beth, uh, the director of the senior center, she has, you know, expressed a lot of concern about seniors coming up and down these stairs and the urgency of repairing them. Um, and we hope to do that as part of this project, as well as um, addressing this retain retaining wall, reinforcing it. Um, and so in terms of the trees that will need to be removed, um, the there's two in this area, a linden and a London plane tree are in the way of where the ramp um, is going to come in. There's a box elder tree that likely needs to be removed because of, you know, grading work that might need to occur in this area to, to, meet, to make the ramp work and this retaining wall. Um, this white pine is certainly in the way. That's right where the landing will be. And then there's three additional white pines um, off to the right here. Um, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure if those will need to be removed. Um, but um, maybe, you know, this one might be in the way, but these two might be okay. Um, we are, you know, the, the design review board um, approved this project with the recommendations that, um, you know, vegetation not be, or ve vegetation shouldn't provide um, too much shade and screening for this area. They want it, you know, it's gonna be an area people need to feel comfortable coming up and down and traveling up, up and down the ramp. And if it's too like hidden in these pine trees, then people might not feel comfortable doing that. So, you know, we'll we'll have to decide whether the pine trees come down. But if uh, any plantings we do um, put in, or, uh, we are definitely proposing. I'll go back to the um, tree tree the planting plan. You know, we're proposing. Um, you know, one, two, at least uh, two or three trees and some uh, smaller shrubs as well. Um, you know, the trees that we plant will be large, mature, mature uh, large shade trees um, that'll grow high um, and tall and kind of not, not have lower limbs um, to provide screening. So it'll, it'll be, the limbs will be higher up. So um, it won't provide, you know, too much of a, a screening effect. So, um, that's basically the gist of it. Um, the light poles and the benches will, will match the, you know, Amherst kind of standard furniture that's seen in the rest of the Boltwood garage area and downtown Amherst. Um, and the bike racks will be, you know, the same U, U loops just uh, relocated. Um, and I think that's basically it. Um, and um, in terms of grading, it's mostly, you know, you can see the, the existing and proposed grade. It's mostly kind of at grade. It'll be raised a little bit above the ground. Um, and there will be some like, obviously, you know, work that needs to be done to, you know, remove soil, place, place a base layer and then build it up from there. But um, we don't expect it to be too disruptive overall. So, um, I guess I'll end there and just kind of open it up for any um, questions or feedback. Um, Rob or Chris, if I missed anything major, feel free to jump in. But. Um, ben, what's happening with the with the stairwell again? So um, my understanding is that um, that the what it's it's going to be resurfaced essentially okay. so each each it'll be each um there'll be new concrete poured over the stairs and each uh tread will be like extended out one I so see. um it'll have a fresh fresh um surface okay uh, 
So uh, we can, uh, Tom, you know, you're on the design review board. Maybe you can give us a recap of your perspective. Yeah, sure. I think, um, Ben, one of the concerns, you're right, the visibility was one of them um, in terms of making sure people felt safe and seen in those spaces. And so, um, you know, I think you did some work to address that. I think one of the other concerns was lighting, right? And I think what we don't get from this is a sense of the throw of the lights that are there. There's there's only three lights within the vicinity of this, as far as I can tell. Um, and I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, on a real pitch black night, you know, what kind of throw we're getting from that one light at the center, um, I guess the corner, the turn on that landing, is that enough to light essentially both of these walkways? Um, Cause that's really good what its job is gonna be, or will there be smaller, you know, illumination, um, you know, stands along the way? Uh, how, how do we imagine making sure that there's enough light for people to navigate that space? Ben? Um, yeah, no, I, I, that's a good point, Tom. I mean, obviously we didn't do like a full on photometric analysis, but, um, this is, this will be, you know, the, the acorn lights are pretty bright. Um, and you know, they do send light in all directions. Um, and you know, there, there could be some darker spots like in the middle of the ramp, but I do think between the three, it, it will provide um enough coverage and um but you know i guess we could we could look into it further i'm not you know i we i guess in terms of a, if we were to put an additional light maybe it could go kind of in this area over here to kind of have on both sides of the landing um I mean, it might it might just be um, it might just be a simple matter of finding out kind of what the recommended spacing is for these. Right. They're obviously used right. along the street, um, you know, and they're used in certain ways. Whether they're different, um, um, you know, foot candle bulbs that are being used um, in different places yeah. and what the throw is, but but there must be some recommendations for use, and so maybe that would just help you kind of just assure that. You know, you have the light bulbs, uh, the right bulbs are um, the, you know, we're not, we're not seeing any gaps um, where people might feel unsafe. Right. So Ben, on this figure that the grayed out uh, trees will be removed. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Doug, please. Thanks, Jack. And thanks, Ben. Um, ben, I wondered if you could go to the uh, panoramic photo you had. Yeah, so when you were describing the route of the of the ramp and you described how the ramp toward the bottom ended, you kind of gestured or even described that it was going to be aligned with the sidewalk that's there along the east side of the Bang Center. Is that true? Because that's not what the drawing shows. Um, so the drawing, so the, yeah, it comes perpendicular to this uh, sidewalk. All right, so, so, so uh, Pam, would, would yes. you be able to bring up the sketch that I sent you the, shortly before the meeting? I guess, yes. I, I, I guess the question I had, Ben, is why it wouldn't be preferable to align the lower mm. half of the ramp with the existing sidewalk. And it, it just seemed like- uh, oh, Like this one, this sidewalk? Yeah. Right. And it seemed like then the plaza could be outboard of the L. And um, that might just make that kind of messy intersection at the bottom more, a little bit cleaner. Ah, it's under this green thing. I can't get it. Oh, yeah. How do, what do I do? Um, oh, if I you you can, you can hide the meeting controls. I got it. There we go. So, so, <laughs> I'm so, so just, sorry. So I just did this as a quick overlay over your drawing. Okay. Yeah. Um, interesting. So I was going to say it probably has to do with the, 
the length of the landing needed or the length of the ramp needed um well this would give so you more more room more length for the run of the ramp right okay interesting so that there would still be a plaza down at the bottom yeah it seemed um, like you know i mean the other example of 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 uh, of opposite routes that don't align is up at the top of Amity Street and Main Street, and how they are not quite aligned. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, do we really need more of those in town? We want to ask Rob Mora um, how he designed this because I think there's a mistake about where that sidewalk is along the east side of the Bang Center. So, Rob? So, uh, uh, Chris, I'm not sure what mistake you're, you would be referring to, but uh, I think we weren't, in, we definitely were not intentionally trying to line up the sidewalks, uh, which looks like it could, could certainly be done. Uh, we were trying to avoid the electrical down at the bottom uh, area, but I think that could still be done in and possibly align the sidewalk with the walk that runs along the east side of the, the banks. But uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't attempt to do that, I guess, is the answer there, but could have done it. Okay. Well, anyway, that, so that, that was my reaction, you know, when we were out there. Um, and I guess I, I would also, um, I guess I'd say, do we really need another sitting area in this part of town? Um, and I don't know whether you've reviewed this with the folks in the in the elderly housing, and they were advocating for more of it. But it but when I've gone through there, it seemed like there were a fair number of of benches already uh, so between the bank center and the and the housing complexes, and then we've got a fair number kind of in, in and around the parking lot uh, at the top. So I just wasn't sure, you know, where that demand came from and, and whether it was really necessary, but I suppose it's not a bad thing. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Um, I was just checking on things myself here, Andrew. Uh, thanks, Jack. Thanks, Ben. Um, I would, I guess, just back to um, Doug's original point. I wonder whether actually the the reason why is because mark this up um, is more around like that this run here that that because that's so steep that if if you move this over then you wouldn't be able to achieve the 12 to one here. If folks can follow my, my chicken scratch there, but that this needs to be, that you would need to be that far away because because of how steep of a downhill that right. is. Right. So that was that was one thought. Um, I I would say, I guess just, I know like we're, we're kind of under the gun um, from a timing perspective here. Can you go, I think it was back one page on this yep. uh maybe one well actually no this one works yeah this is a good one is that one of like just my sort of um old landscape architect sensibilities is just yeah. like the the my only concern with this design is is like you sort of you you kind of kill these spaces right like you're kind of going through the middle of it they would actually i thought it would have been kind of interesting if if this was more of like a meandering type of thing. And then you could have like access to the parking lot. You could have a longer path and then you'd free up, like you'd actually make this like be a usable space. Right. Again, I know we're, at, we're under the gun. So like, I, I don't anticipate you could do anything in that, but I think that that might make, you know, for a more interesting walk and also more accessible to the parking lot. And then if you could just go back one more time to the slide you were just on, um, you know, just wondering how you, we've got the landings, um, the landings here is like, would it make more sense to have those be at like the midpoint 
right? I understand we're like, it looks like we're just indexing to the 30 feet and the 30 feet. But like, if we put those in the center, then that seems like that would make for a, an easier journey for uh, for somebody who um, was traversing the long ramp. Uh -huh. Andrew, I, I think, I, I, I hope we can aspire to use of the annotation uh, <laughs> option here in Zoom. You're, you're, it's, it's, I've got a touch screen. I'm just having fun with it now. Oh, it's just, it's just excellent. excellent. I have a, I have a touch screen, but I'm afraid to touch it, but. <laughs> um, but no, but very not. That, so, that's really helpful when you can do yeah, that. Yeah. I guess it's like, I had never, I, I was telling folks, I, I joined the visit late, but like, it was a really nice green space back here that I had never been in at all. And it was pretty expansive. And, and I think just this sort of, it bisects it and it, it takes the open space and sort of limits it, its ability to be in open space, which does open up like, well, maybe this could be some really nice garden or something. And maybe that's something we could do down the road. So like, um, we'll just, we'll just note that. And then the other question, sorry to keep peppering you, is that-, that hey, was Andrew, the, did you do the site visit? I joined late, yeah, but I was there. You, you might as well just take the site visit before because I think I might've skipped that. Um, I'm sorry. One more time, Jack. We're just you're doing. The, I think you're essentially doing the site visit report uh, oh. for us. <laughs> if you I, could, I, I so I, I could. Um, I arrived um, as Alan was leaving, so I don't know what Alan presented up front. I know he was talking about the trees um, that were being removed, which which Ben also walked through in his intro. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that there was conversation around the fate of those trees and um the the need to uh remove many of them to to make space for the construction but also for safety purposes um there was talk about the stairs and the work that ben described needing to be completed due to the condition of those um we had conversation around the um just that connection point that um Doug had referenced whether it could align with the uh, the walkway that's currently in place. Um, I I had shared my thoughts just around the overall bisection of the space. Um, we had noted also that sort of off in this direction there was um, some kind of utilities from Johnny's Tavern and noise from Johnny's Tavern that the plantings might help uh, screen. But that also that the the white pines that you know one being here is that those guys also provided some probably some nice screening to the parking lot for people in the Ann Whalen apartments um, off to the east. I, I think that was the bulk of it. Really, Ben covered off on almost everything we talked about. But, um, we're opening it up to other folks. Um, okay. This this was I'm sorry, but this was the we did have some some conversation around this tree in particular and whether or not that one would actually need to be removed. I know that, that it was identified as one that would because of the construction, but it seemed like it would be pretty far removed. And we all noted that it, it was, it, it had a very interesting form. It was, you know, relatively attractive tree. Again, Alan might've spoken to the health of it. And I, I, maybe I missed that. Uh, and maybe that's driving some of the consideration for removal as well. But that it is a, it is a pretty fascinating tree um, one, I imagine, certainly kids would love to climb, but also just kind of nice to look at. Um, so, um, yeah, that was that, that's my read from the visit, and then just my okay, thank comments. you. Yeah, thank you. Well, I mean, I'll definitely defer to the 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 landscape architects and architects uh, on the board on this. Um, so, uh, Maria. Uh, thanks, Jack. Um, so, uh, yeah, I can touch on what Alan went over. Um, Chris asked a lot of questions of Alan because Alan couldn't be here at the meeting, but um, we kind of talked about, you know, why trees had to be removed and um, a lot of it had to do with the grading. Um, anytime you disturb the roots of a tree, it's basically um, the root system, Alan was saying, goes about 18 inches subsurface and is slightly larger than the drip line of the canopy of the tree. And so um, uh, most of the pines, you know, there, you could see they were going to get their roots disturbed, even though they were pretty far off. 
Um, two of them were so close together that by the time you remove one, the, it in, impacts the adjacent ones. The ones closer to the building, um, he was saying that the cost to preserve a tree is so exorbitantly high that by the time you do it, you're not even guaranteed you're going to save the tree and you've spent all this money to try to preserve it. And so um, I had some conversations with, I think it was Johanna and I were kind of strolling around. It was, I was kind of torn because this is a sweet little sort of tucked away green space. We have very few of them. Um, and I hear Alan's points and I know that uh, the town is you know, been so swamped with a lot of more urgent issues. And so this suddenly is on our plate at the last second. And so I, I, I was trying to rationalize, gosh, what, you know, how, which way would I go on this? And, and I read this document that came with our packet. It was um, dated January 29th about these different projects for the accessibility, disability access advisory committee. And the sentence that really got me that convinced me, all right, maybe this is, a good project because what it was trying to provide was these various projects around town improving accessibility and the sentence was to provide a link to and promote a network of walking routes seniors use for exercise so it sounded to me like yes this is creating these large ramps that have railings that suddenly you know like a lot of people have been saying bisects this um, cute little quaint green space with these really unique trees but it's also providing a new sort of amenity that's um, being updated throughout the town. And so that kind of helped me sort of, you know, uh, alleviate my like sort of like thoughts like, wow, these really great trees that I didn't even know were here. I think my, I, I remember seeing a photo of my kids sitting in that, that um, London plane tree. So uh, given, you know, the fact that there's this grant money, there are these improvements that need to happen. Um, I liked Andrew's idea about, you know, being a little more gracious with the, the, the path, but I know budget and time are sort of conflicting with that. But um, had we had the luxury of those things, time and money, um, <laughs> um, it, would be, it would have been really great to really, you know, create something that was a little more organic feeling or, um, uh, yeah, just a little more special. Um, so, I mean, maybe Doug's fix is, uh, an easy enough one to be able to meet the deadline. And I like how it aligns. It looks a little more, you know, less sort of like an accidental thing. It was a little more intention. So maybe that's a good shift to do with the constraints we have. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I just, I feel like, you know, this is doing something that's helping the really close by adjacent residents who need, you know, accessible routes and that this is part of some sort of a, like a healthy outdoor lifestyle um, that uh, I, I, if it's possible to do Doug's suggestion of just shifting that vertical ramp, making the plaza, you know, hug the right side of it. Um, it, it further bisects the green spaces, but at least makes a little more of an intentional sort of uh, mark on the, the land, I guess. Um, but, but yeah, I, I was a little torn about, you know, suddenly like, wow, we, we, we have the space. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't realize it, but, um, but we're improving it and maybe we can improve it, this design a little further with um, the input that was given tonight. Um, but uh, that, that's basically what I wanted to say. And I don't know that I covered everything Alan said, Chris, you might've had more notes. You were frantically writing stuff. So maybe you want to go through your thing. If Thanks Maria. Um, speak. I could just speak that um, Alan recommended certain trees. I think he said box elders are good. They're very hardy. He said that London plane trees are really good because they are uh, they they deal with compacted soil really well. And um, there was um, one other tree which was a red maple that he thought might be suitable. So those are the three um, species of trees that he would potentially recommend for this area for replacements. Great. Um, Janet? Um, also, um, Alan Snow had also recommended that um, the trees that, you know, all the trees that would be removed would be replaced by other trees. And he recommended a mix of hardwoods and evergreens. Um, and I thought the evergreens did a nice job of screaming, screaming the parking lot. He did not recommend replacing it with white pines, um, even though they're native species and they, they grow crazy tall 
and they drop their branches pretty often. And so he was, he didn't recommend another kind of evergreen, but it'd be good, I think, to ask him that. Um, and then evergreens are just, for me, just very beautiful at all, time, all times of the year. The other thing he brought up, which was the need to especially water um, new trees in the first year, like twice a week. And so he wasn't volunteering his department to do that. And I think um, the suggestion was maybe someone from the bank center could fill those water bags that they put on new trees. But I do think it's important that we have a watering plan in place to make sure the trees are successful. Um, and, you know, that was, that was basically it. I had a question about, um, do people in the Clark House and the and Whaling Park, like, were they notified about this ahead of time or will they be notified afterwards? Because I think if we, if the town goes in and cuts down five trees and people just see that and not know there's a plan in place or what's going on, it, it probably would be kind of upsetting. So those are my, my comments. Very good. Um, thank you, Doug. Yeah, I wanted, uh, wanted to ask uh, along that sidewalk, or, or I'm sorry, along the stairwell that's to be rebuilt. Uh, yeah. The sort of upper, wall has a couple of uh, recessed light fixture wells and it looks like the light fixtures may be out of commission so i wanted to just ask if you're fixing or replacing the lighting along that stair yeah i'll, I'll get to the picture of it um there's 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 there they are yeah. yeah those are in pretty rough shape um rob was that was, was that part of the scope of the stair replacement i know there's a fixture at the top yeah you know. yeah the, the 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 stair replacement right now the plan is to remove uh both those sections of stair and replace it with one straight run uh okay. with a retaining wall uh to the side where the the timber uh plantings are the timber uh framed plantings are uh the lights will be just uh discontinued and infilled and removed. Okay. All right. And then I guess the only other thing I was going to say was I, I also really liked Andrew's uh, suggestion of a more circu circuitous route down that sort of hugs the perimeter of the green space rather than bisecting it. I, so I would especially like that if that allowed you to achieve a one on 20 slope and eliminate the rails. Um, and, and hearing that part of the motivation for this was exercise routes for the folks in the Ann Whalen and Clark House complexes makes me less, uh, you know, sort of the efficiency and direct route uh, is less, seems less important. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Rob, do you have comment on that uh, I did uh, the reason why we didn't go any further to the east is there's a there's a major uh, electrical service and easement through there that runs uh, right behind Johnny's uh, there's a transformer I think you, you you can't see it on this plan but you might see it on one of the uh, GIS mapping plans but uh, I was trying to avoid the area where the where we know there's uh, a power uh, line running through there which is just off the east edge of the landing that we have drawn on this plan. So you so you could shift it to the west as I had proposed, but but you can't go any farther to the east. Yeah, my my only question about that is the the north east corner of what you're showing as a plaza. Uh, I just we just have to look at that closer to see what type of you know, raised wall would be needed to hold up that corner of the plaza, how much construction or, you know, over digging is needed to accomplish that. And again, trying to stay away from that electrical trench and not increase the cost of this, that, uh, uh, which was really part of trying to f get the, the, the ramp on existing grade as close as possible. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from the board? Maria? Would it be possible just to get rid of that funny, really sharp 
angled new sidewalk that's proposed that doesn't align with anything. Um, I'm not going to be able to do what Andrew does and mark up your thing, but do you see where um, the existing tree, the largest existing tree at the top, and then see that sidewalk that has a sharp goes, yeah, that's not there right now. I wonder if you could just not do that bit. <laughs> at, uh, you know, just either connect it to their ramp or straighten it down. Because right now that you can see the new and old sidewalk patchy patchwork there, but nothing actually exists as what's drawn. So um, maybe Pam could show the um, aerial photograph because I think that shows a little bit better what exists currently. Or maybe Maureen's photos. She had some of trees, I thought. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of see it to the right here. So, yeah. It shows up in the aerial photograph of Pimp. Yeah, okay. Uh, Not this one. Well, it's kind of covered up here. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you see it? That's the yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I think what's there now is a extra patch of concrete that's not shown in the aerial. Um, hmm. Well, I guess what was throwing me a little was just there was a lot of funny paths that didn't quite connect to other paths. Um, but yeah, I, I understand. I hear what you're saying about trying to work with existing grades and do the minimal amount because you don't want to have a lot of retainage and a lot of um, walls here and there. But um, that little angle there still seems odd to me. But um, it, it's not a big deal. <laughs> All right. Thank you, uh, Janet. Um, so I know that. I wonder what we should do next because it sounds like no one really loves the design that we're looking at. And so there's some suggestions of, you know, making it, you know, more meandering. There's suggestions that may not work or maybe Doug's first idea of making it closer in. And there's questions about the grade. Um, where do we go from here? Because it's this project is sort of coming to us quickly and then has to move quickly. And I'm wondering if there's like a next step or a next meeting or is there some, can we, can we workshop it here? Just, I'm just listening to what people are saying. Well, I just wanted Absolutely. to let people know that we have a, we have a meeting scheduled, I think. Um, I'm going to pull you at the end of this meeting, but I would like to schedule a meeting for next week. And we were going to talk about zoning amendments. And then we have another meeting scheduled for the 21st. Um, so either one of those meetings could absorb a change in this plan, I think. Sounds reasonable. Doug? Yeah, I, I, I was not trying to derail the process with my quick sketch this evening. Um, you know, I threw it out there. It, it sounded like there was some support for it. Um, I understand Rob saying that we really don't want to move farther to the east and go into a more meandering solution. Uh, I will say that the overlay that I did, the plaza that, sh that I showed was not any farther east than the existing uh, semicircular plaza that was in Ben's original drawing. So, and, and the shape of that plaza, it doesn't really matter to me, you know, if it needed to be semicircular or triangular or whatever worked better with grade, that would be fine. Um, I feel like I was just putting out an idea and, you know, you guys can, you guys are running the show. So, um, you know, do what you want with it. Um, you've heard some comments here from us tonight. And, you know, I, I understood that Rob was working on the construction drawings right now for bid. Um, you know, so you, if you're under the gun, here's, you know, we gave you some thoughts and you Take them or leave them and keep on going. Good, good. Um, all right. Well, I think um, we can pull the 
uh, public. I see one hand up. Shoshana can state her name and her address. Hi, Shoshana. Hi, uh, Shoshana King, uh, 46 Ruling Green Drive, um, here as a representative for the Amherst Public Shade Tree Committee. Um, we were interested in um, if there's any way to save the London plane tree. We figure it's a very charismatic tree and we'd like to see it survive the project. Um, and we also wanted to provide um, any of our guidance on picking new trees and um, labor for putting in new trees as well. And um, we're also very excited to hear that you guys are looking to put in actual shade trees and not just ornamentals. Thank very good, so thank you. Yeah. Uh, ben, do you wanna? Um, Onto that, or yeah, no, that that's a wonderful offer for help with guidance about uh, tree plantings and for the offer of labor for helping with the tree planting. Um, and uh, you know, I will. I would like to say we'll definitely take you up on that offer, but we'll we'll, we'll discuss it. Um, and I think uh, someone had mentioned earlier about watering. I, I do the senior center and the Musanti Health Center. They're all very excited about this project, and I, I. Be, I'd be shocked if they weren't willing to help out with watering. I think it would, they would definitely be helping out with that. Great. Um, Chris? So I just wanted to know from Rob and Ben, um, you know, what the schedule is and whether there's time to make changes and whether they would feel comfortable, you know, coming back either next Wednesday or in two weeks to show you um, some alterations in the plans or sort of, you know, because this project really needs to, Ben needs to put it out to bid and it needs to be constructed by the end of May. That's my understanding. So we're under some time constraints. And I just wondered from Rob and Ben, what, how, how much flexibility is there? Um, well, not for that time frame. So we were going to try to get this out to bid this week. Uh, we've been working hard at final, you know, getting the bid specs together and finalizing the bid package. Uh, if we're looking at changes, which I don't have a problem with, I just uh, for Chris and Ben, I think we're we're backing up quite a bit. Um, I certainly don't have the time to have anything prepared for next week. That's a significant change, uh, and we definitely would need to do more survey to accurately locate those existing areas that both um you know maria and and doug were talking about because we 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 focused our design just in this area we didn't go you know to look for um accuracy of the gis or aerials of what's been done there in the recent years so we have to spend a lot more time on that um, which is fine but just so we know that that's that's what would happen. I don't think we'll be able to meet that schedule that Ben has for this uh, project currently. So does that mean that we would lose out on the grant money if we weren't be able to meet their um, time constraints on the state side? That that's that's basically how the grant is worded. Yeah, um, you know, we could ask for an extension, um, but you know. It, uh, the grant was given to us, you know, under the, uh, you know, with the assumption that the project would be, you know, substantially completed by the end of May. So, you know, that that would mean, you know, construction well underway and nearing completion. So, you know, our e even without any delays in permitting, our our timeline was pretty ambitious um, to get the project, you know, bid by April. You know, construction started by May. That, that's a lot of assumptions, and I think any any other delays would, you know, risk um, DOT taking back the money, which has happened to other communities. So, um, you know, I think I, I agree that the recommendations are reasonable. Um, I just, you know, I, I personally wasn't involved in the, you know, surveying work and and design developments, but I, you know. Rob's statement about not having accurate or not having, you know, surveys of those areas 
um, would mean certainly, you know, a, a lot more work to be done to get the designs changed, so. Thank you, uh, Maria. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Doug that I think it's a little, just too late. Um, the, the, when you said you got the grant in March, it was March of this year then, not March of 2020. They only gave you two, three months from when you got the grant to when you have to have it completed. That seems ridiculous. Yeah, it's, but, it's um, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, but um, yeah, I think with, with the sort of urgency and not wanting to lose the money, um, it'd be great if next time there was more time, but boy, that, that seems like a really insane process to me. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, thanks for at least presenting it. <laughs> and, um, but uh, I, I think like with the given constraints, um, just pushing forward makes the most sense at this point. Is there is there a minor uh, alteration that can be made to save the, the London plane tree? Um, I wasn't at, I regrettably wasn't at the site visit this morning, so I'm not sure what Alan said, but I, you know, I, I agree that's a kind of a very unique, interesting tree. And, you know, I, I, you know, I would propose that we do whatever we can to, to save it. Um, but I wasn't sure, did Alan comment on anything about root compaction or, you know, issues with the, with that tree in particular? So I could talk with him about that, but. Yeah, uh, Janet. So Alan said that the um, London plane trees, they thrive in compacted soil and they like wet soil or the drowning and they seem kind of hardy. He also said he thought all the trees wouldn't make it at some point. So that was the other point of view. Um, so anyway, I, I obviously, you know, don't have, I, I was gonna basically say, if, if anyone wants to know what I think is I kind of like Doug's plan more than the one you presented but I see the constraints you're on. So, you know, that's just my view. So I would say carry on. And if you could move it to Doug's, that's great. But if it's too much, you know, you know, it's, it's the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, Chris. I forget what I was going to say. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, my advice would be um, to approve it and ask Ben and Rob to do what they can to respond to some of the comments, but um, knowing that it's probably not, uh, all of the comments aren't going to be met. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. Um, so, yeah, th this is, there's a lot, um, it's a small project, but, you know, lots of comments. Um, um, we got comments from the public and responses. So now we're just. You have, um, Mr. McDougall, Mr. Yeah. Marshall. Doug, yeah. Doug and, and, and Andrew. Doug first, please. Okay. I was just going to say, um, you know, I don't know your public uh, procurement process very well, but I have been involved in projects where we sent one thing out to bid and we had change order number one ready to go as soon as the contractor was on board. Uh, from a scoping point of view, I don't see a whole lot of difference in the, the surface area of, of concrete that's being asked for between the two alternatives. So maybe that's an option. That's all. Good point, thank you. Uh, Andrew? Yeah, I like. I I think Doug makes a very good point. I would just, you know, I, I'm I'm a little worried that we're we're doing this just because we can, because we have the money, and I'd want to make sure, you know, th this is this is something that certainly given the the the, the hardscape and physical, the, like the the railings, the concrete, this is something that's going to be here for a very long time, and so I really want to make sure that that the design is as effective as it can be. So. Um, yeah, Re ready for the change order, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm looking at uh, some of the other documents that we have here, but um, 
All right. Well, so can, you know, a um, little confused and then we have some good comments. Um, what's your suggestions, Chris, at this point? Well, like I said, I think, you know, you can go ahead and approve it and, and ask um, Ben and Rob to make as many changes as they can, you know, within the time frame available, whether that's a change order or whatever it is, um, and give them, you know, sort of a flexibility to work it out. Is that a reasonable thing to do? I'm I'm asking Rob. I'm looking right at Rob. <laughs> Is that a reason? <laughs> I can't tell. Um, I, I, yeah, I think it's absolutely a reasonable thing to do. Um, we'll we'll try uh, to to make adjustments. I can tell you that. Um, I, I'm as I'm thinking back. This has been four years now since uh, uh, this idea started, and there was a lot of involvement with the senior center and I did go to a public meeting at the Clark house and I'm recalling discussions about, um, and it was the previous senior center director about uh, small groups walking off the landing onto the, the new grass area for activities. And I think that's why, as I'm looking at it now, we tried to create that, that flat area right off of the, the, the straight edge of the, the half circle. So I want to, you know, and, and I'm not trying to convince anybody of away from the comments that were made, but um, if we alter it significantly, I'd want to go back through those steps and talk to those groups again and, and make sure that I'm not undoing something that I might have uh, promised back that long ago. Um, and I'll try to remember more about that as I work through that. Yeah, you know, I'm... I, I... I'm, you know, I'm not an arborist, but I'm not not clear why that London plane tree has to come down with the design. Uh, maybe. I don't think it's been staked out. And if we stake it out, it may appear that it doesn't need to come down. I don't know. Okay. The gnarly tree that you're interested in saving, right? Yes. Yeah. I, th I think if you, so, sorry, Jack, can I? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that if you realign the the sidewalk, you're well within the drip line. So I think that that's that's probably why that um, Alan had identified that. I see. Okay, so um, we have a um, need to move this forward, and there might be a condition or two, uh, Doug. Can I make a motion that we, uh, let's see, do we have a hearing open that we need to close and then that we uh, approve this design as presented by Ben and Rob and uh, ask them to move forward with it, uh, taking into consideration as many of the comments that we made as, as they can incorporate into the constraints that they have from the state for the uh, schedule for the project. Sounds good. Uh, we have a second on that or? Second. Okay. okay, Tom. All right, any discussion? Andrew? Yeah, so so this is assuming if nothing can change, we would just build this as is. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I think that's pretty clear. I just wanted to yeah. see if anybody objected, but okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, no other? Discussion. Oh, uh, okay, Andrew, you're you're good. Um, okay, let's do roll call then. Um, based on the the motion, Maria. Approve. Uh, Andrew. Nay. Uh, what was that? No. 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 Uh, Doug. Approve. Okay, Tom. Aye. And Janet. Can't hear you. Sorry, I was going to say um, yes, approve, um, and then hopefully adding a condition of replacing all the plants with a mix of hardwoods and evergreens. Just that's probably for later. Okay. 
Dan Johanna? Approve. And myself uh, approve with as many of the conditions that they can, uh, you know, uh, come up with with your shortened timeline. So uh, I think that's that. So anything else, Chris, on that? I want to set some conditions. There's one that Janet just said about adding conditions to replace all the plants with deciduous and evergreen trees. Yeah, um, what was that, Janet, again? Can't hear you. Sorry. Place all the trees that are removed with a mix of hardwoods and evergreens. Um, and then um, that's really it. What about adding a light? Did you want to add a light? Did someone? Someone mentioned um, the lighting was not adequate. And then yeah, you brought that up. That. I think we just need. Um, an expectation or maybe a demonstration of the light being um, adequate. Um, so, I wonder that, if, if we could see whatever Rob comes up with, like at our next meeting, so we're not just let it kind of go out into the sphere. Even if it's just a submission. But you want to see it for your information? Yeah, just for information, like so we don't lose track of it, or it could just be submitted to us later so that's not a condition but it's something that you're asking me to do yeah or i don't know if it's a condition but i just thought i can bring the final plan back to the planning board okay so is that going to be a condition chris the board wants it to be a condition but I, I, i'm sorry i don't really know if it's a condition i was just hoping to see it again so it'll just be a request, okay? Okay. And well, by the, by the end of the May, end of May, we can just all go see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. I'm, and and is like that that London plane tree. I mean, I, you know, I know it's. Um, can can we kind of just give it, let it, let it uh, give it a chance to survive with with this without. No, taking it down take because plane tree to the extent that's possible. Yeah, because yeah, I'll talk with Alan about tree protection measures. Yeah, I mean, I, I know it's going to be interfered, but you know, it's it's not a foregone thing that it's going would die with, uh, with that you know construction as as laid out. But anyway, those are all kind of just nebulous asks and uh we already kind of approved jack johanna has her name her oh hand johanna up. yes thanks i don't really know the definition of a condition but the other piece was just um, a request that there is an arranged management plan so it sounds like there's eagerness to do it but new trees aren't going to thrive unless you know alan basically said they need love and care for about three years so getting buy-in uh, to get that. And then maybe we've already crossed this bridge, but the path alignment question and just really making sure that on the far end, closest to the entrance, the, the way the paths intersect makes sense for a pedestrian. So to the extent possible, you would like the end of the path to align with the end of the other path? Yeah. I wouldn't go so far as to call it a condition. I think it's just a request. Like, yeah. Okay. All right. So I think we've um, got some things for for Chris to provide to uh, you know Ben and Rob as as you get this thing out to bed. So um, I think that's 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 that for that project, and we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> nine thank you. Thank you so nine fifteen. So <laughs> thanks, Rob and Ben. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So take care. Um and old business. Chris. 
I, I don't think we have any old business to talk about tonight, but except, well, no. We well, we have, have the meet, yeah, well. We have new business. Th yeah, that's new business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the meeting for next week, next Wednesday. Yeah. Meeting for next Wednesday. Who can come? I think Jack said he could come. And who else can is available? Janet and Jack and Johanna. Doug, Andrew, Johanna, Tom, yeah. Maria. Um, Maria. Yes, she's thumbs up. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven for the 14th. Okay, that's good. I'm, 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 I will try. The, I don't know if you saw me shaking, but not a guarantee. <laughs> okay. There were... And, we that's on the mixed use building and, and um, inclusionary zoning. Inclusionary zoning, and there were one or two other things, right? That um, it's new business, but we wanted to bring them up next week. One was um, whether the planning board should have associate members. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Sent you an email about that today. That's being brought up because the um, town council is moving into their season when they appoint members of boards and committees particular oh it's really just the planning board and the zba that they appoint but anyway they um there's an uh, uh there's a possibility of having associate members in the zoning bylaw and the question is um does the planning board feel that it's necessary or would you like to have associate members so i'm going to put that on the agenda for um the 14th because that is a, a zoning amendment that would have to be um made if no it wouldn't have to be made i'm sorry it's not a zoning amendment but it i'll just put it on the agenda um if you agree to that sure uh but your recollection is we've never there there's never been associate members as far as during your, your tenure with the planning department yeah so and i also did reach out to the pioneer valley planning commission to kind of get their feedback on this and you know kind of just understand this but you know, the ZBA, I understand why they would have associate members because they were such a small group. Uh, now they're bigger, you know, going from three to five. We reduced from nine to seven. Um, but yeah, be an interesting, you know, discussion. Uh, Janet? Um, I have a question about, like, I didn't read through all the materials that you sent, but is there, like, has someone done research on this or talked to other towns, or is there any information for us? There's a memo from um, Lynn Griesmer, and I think I forwarded that to you this afternoon, so you may not have had a chance so, to read it. So Janet, I did reach out to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission yeah, because glad, they're, they're yeah, going to see it, you know, yeah. a lot of towns and and. Yeah, I just wanted to know if there was any reason for this, or it just seems like we're really busy with a lot of stuff. And it just, I, I don't, you know, I'm just kind of wondering if there's someone had done some research and there's some impetus behind it that it, it's so really a case of it comes up every year. And so they want to either do something about it or put it to bed. Okay. Okay. Um, any other new business? One other new business, which is um, the moratorium. I don't know if I mentioned that to you last time, but the there's a group of um, well, there was a group of town council members, three uh, three of them, who proposed a moratorium on building permits while the town um, deals with zoning amendments. And the moratorium would apply to um, residents resident uses over three units in the BG, the BL, and the RG zoning districts. And um, it would last for six months. So um, we can talk about that. You will be holding a public hearing on that on May 19th, but I wanted to just let you know about it because I don't think we had time to tell you about it last time. So anyway, these three town, councilor, town councilors brought this up and then it looked like the town council wasn't going to um, push put this forward. Uh, as a majority group, and so that those three town council members went to uh, went out into the public, and they gathered, I think, over 200, like 283 or something like that, is the last count of signatures for this. So there's now a petition article, and because there's a petition article, 
um, it automatically gets referred to the planning board and the CRC to hold a public hearing. So your public hearing will be held on May 19th. So those are the two things that I wanted to bring up as new business. Thank you. Uh, Doug, you have your hand up. Yep. Oops. Um, back on the first item, um, the uh, associate members, when I look at the text that's in the, in the zoning bylaw, um, there are, there is a, there's a set of conditions and they include ands and ors. And so it's a little bit ambiguous to me exactly when these associate members would be authorized to vote. Um, so I guess, I don't know whether it would be the town council that would explain that or Chris, you would explain it. But when I read it at least the first two times, I uh, came away not feeling confident that I understood exactly what that situation would be. And, and I wasn't sure that everybody on, you know, anybody would agree with exactly what I thought I read. So, that well, would be helpful for next week. Okay. Very good. Um, anything else new business around that on the topics <clears throat> we've discussed? <clears throat> okay, so uh, Form A, A and R subdivision applications. Yes. Nope. None. Uh, ZBA applications. Nothing to report. Okay. Upcoming uh, SPP SB. Are SUB applications? Only the um, 11 East Pleasant Street was uh, submitted and uh, um, it was taken under our wing and it's now part of our projects. And Pam has put it into Munis and it's um, scheduled for a public hearing. I shouldn't say we've taken it under our wing. We've brought it into our basket of things that we need to deal with. Um, the public hearing is scheduled for May 5th. Okay. Anything else? Nothing that's really solidified yet, no. Okay. So planning board committee and uh, liaison reports, uh, the PB, uh, PC met last week with executive committee and tomorrow there'll be a a uh, uh, general committee, and I, and I just the mass and motion thing. I, I thing I forwarded uh, to you, Chris, and you distributed to the planning board. I thought it was interesting, and didn't realize that that Amherst had done so much uh, in that regard. But there's you know there's more obviously that we can do um, uh, in that. So and. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions on that. No, okay, good. So the uh, CPA committee. Sorry, no new no. updates. Okay, and the Ag Commission, Doug? Our next meeting is next Tuesday. No new updates tonight. Okay, thank you. And the DRB, Tom? Um, we had a meeting on Monday and I was actually pretty sick, so I was not there and I'm just getting caught up on the notes so I can update you guys um, on next Wednesday. Very good. Thank you. Uh, and then Chris on the CRC. We're meeting on Tuesday to present the um, latest um, mixed use building bylaw and the latest inclusionary zoning bylaw and um, to talk to them very briefly about a few other things so that's before we're going to talk about it the day after that but that's okay yes i think that's okay that's okay that's all right and then there will be a decision about well is it ready to go back to um town council should we, if we can get comments in to you before that meeting we probably should uh, individual comments? If you get comments to us, we will, um, I'll, I will prevail on Pam to put them online and then we can share them. 
Yeah, for you. Yeah. Janet? Yes, you've been sending us a remarkable number of emails from um, residents. Do you, like if it's, if you're getting, do you send that along to the CRC or do they, if it's on something that they're looking at or? They usually get them. They usually get copied. It's either they get them first and they copy us or vice versa, or they're sent out to all of us. Um, what we're doing, what Pam and Nate and Brianna have been doing is trying to put together a website to show these zoning amendments and then have a place on them on the web page where people can submit comments, but also so people can see what other people have already submitted. So I think Pam's gone through um, what has been submitted so far. She's scanned them all and she's ready to post them. It's just that we haven't quite pulled the trigger yet on you know, saying this thing is live. But maybe Pam has a little bit more to say about that. Okay. I really don't. Chris, I mean, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. It's been a team effort, um, and these things just take a little bit of time. Okay. Very good. Um, so report to the chair. I have nothing that's not been stated already. Um, report of staff. Thank you for sticking with us and for meeting so often. We really appreciate it. And I know it's a lot of work. And so thank you. Thank you, Chris. I, you know, keep, keep, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> you'll, be seeing, you're... you'll be seeing emails from me and you'll just go delete, delete, delete. <laughs> <laughs> I, never. I would never admit to that, you know, but. <laughs> never. <laughs> Uh, so we can adjourn and we'll see everybody next week. Bye. So thank you. Have a, everyone have a good evening.